guys? Welcome to the Just Pearly Things YouTube channel. Today, I have a special guest on the channel. Welcome to the channel. Introduce yourself to the people. Hi, my name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. I am here in Green Bay, Wisconsin in the United States. And um, Pearl, I'm so excited to be with you today. I love your channel and I love your show. So it's just an honor to be with you today. I'm excited to have you. You seem like such a knowledgeable guy. You just seem to know a lot of a lot of facts. It's we're gonna share some pretty awesome stuff that I think is gonna blow the the crowd away today. So I'm excited to share it. Okay. So what? So are you? How familiar are you with you, like red pill content? Uh, extremely. Um, remember, I've been involved not only in healthcare but in politics for thirty years, and so they 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 coincide because we're gonna learn today that um, as you understand health. And I understand the difference between men and women, uh, the, the separation and all the thought processes are, are connected so deeply. So I'm very excited to, to share from a biological standpoint uh, what I've even put in clinical practice that so fits in with the red pill content that you're going to love it. Okay, so tell me, what does the red pill get right about the differences between men and women? Well, it's quite simple. See, now remember, coming from a doctoring standpoint, if I'm going to approach a female, there's a certain level of hormonal, hormones that a woman has compared to a guy. Now, here's what happens. And, and what I've always been known for, and I'll, and I'll share my background a little bit, and I'll show my, share my story a little bit, but here's what happens. The biology of a woman, once again, hormones affect a woman and a man both physically and mentally. So therefore, the traits that women have uh, are biological. For example, we know that testosterone has not only physical and mental traits, but the idea is the, the mental traits, once again, today are looked at as bad as toxic, which for example, testosterone makes a man very aggressive, mm -hmm. okay? Makes him very laser focused, makes him very competitive. And with the exception of world of sports, that's looked down for in, in a world of men. Right. But, that, but that's biology. When it comes to a woman, by nature, estrogens are very connective. That's why, like I said, men create society, women create a home. But what they're trying to do now is trade the home to society, and guess what happens? If you took try to make a home life into a, a football team, mm. it would be it, it wouldn't match up. Mm. So the idea is this, and, and and there are cross traits, but the sad part is this, and what we're seeing now today is we're trying to make traits of both men and women dramatically different. That's, that that's unbiological mm -hmm. because uh, by nature estrogens do certain physical and mental things to women, testosterone do certain f physical and mental things to them, and we're trying to tell people that's wrong. And I'm going, you're just fighting against your biology. And I'm going to go into great detail of it. I'm going to show you how I figured this out 24 years ago and why I've taught this for so many years. So when all this stuff has come out recently in the last five, 10 years, I'm like going, you guys are dramatically leading people down a wrong path that's going to affect them both physically and mentally. It's going to lead to a lot of problems. Okay, so let's let's start 24 years ago. What were you in med school? What what happened? Okay, so let's do this. Let's start back even even earlier in this so we get the full story. Okay. So my I was a sick child, and I was diagnosed as a juvenile delinquent. And I grew up in a little small town um, in northern Wisconsin. We lived in the country, a couple hundred acres. It was great. And But when I would go into the world, um, once again, I didn't form well to society because I had psychological things. Today, they would call it like Asperger's and things like that. Well, what happened is I didn't realize no way. that as Wait, I was- You have Asperger's? Yeah. I would have been diagnosed of it as a child. Oh my okay, gosh. Okay, we'll go through Someone this. asked me if I had that the other day. So there's someone I know that's like convinced I have that. What does that mean? Well, Is that a bad we'll, thing? We'll go, we'll, go into, we'll, we'll go into the psychological aspects okay. of this, okay. Okay? okay? So let's go through it. So so then back then, but they diagnosed me as a juvenile delinquent. My mom and my dad were sitting there going, you know, if, and they even said that if he doesn't get help, he'll be in prison someday. Well, what they didn't realize that there was physical things going on in my body that that affected me psychologically. Okay, so long story short, as a teenager, as a 13 year old teenager, I started to figure this out. And back then, the medical field, they didn't drug many kids, so everything was counseling or everything was behavioral changes, but there was internal physical changes that led to those mental changes. So I started to figure it out as a teenager and I started to change my foods and I realized that an immunological problem. So then I, I, I graduated high school, went to college, and I said, listen, I'm gonna study nutrition, immunology, and I, and, I, and I thought maybe I'm going to go into uh, some medical field that did it. Well, I, I realized that the natural route actually actually gave me more answers. Uh, because if you look at the today, mm -hmm. it's a it's a two and a half trillion dollar system mm -hmm. of trying to change people psychologically, pharmaceutically. Mm -hmm. But nobody ever suffers from a psychological condition because they have a pharmaceutical deficiency. 
Now, I know it's kind of funny saying that, but think about that. Mm-hmm. You know, no one suffers because they lack psychiatric medication, why they have problems this way. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, I started to go, I started to really get into it. And I, I, was, I was going through school, I went to my graduate school, I got my undergraduate degrees. And then all of a sudden, I met this woman um, towards the end of my graduate school, my doctorate. And all of a sudden, get this, um, I was starting to date her. And no joke, on the second day that I met her, she looked at me and she said, I think I'm going to marry you. And I looked at her and I said, you know something, I think you're right. And so we started to hang out. And then after about a couple of weeks of dating, she actually let me know that uh, she couldn't have kids, that she was infertile. So she suffered from endometriosis. She suffered from cystic acne, ulcerative colitis, and cluster headaches. And she was seeing both medical and natural people and continue to get sicker. And this time I'm 24 years old and she's 23. Well, and find out, and, but, if you, but Pearl, if you looked at her, you never even thought anything was wrong. She's petite, cute, blonde, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Well, then I, I, I started to look at it and go, oh my goodness. Can I, in, in knowing being a doc now, and I'm not fully graduated, I had about three months left of school. I actually looked at her and said, can I see your labs? Because it's some hormonal issue. And then that's when I realized that once again, that what the doctors were doing through was dramatically incomplete. For example, Pearl, and I'm going to ask you a question, so walk me through with this, and the, the, this is going to blow your audience away. If we look at just hormones in general, as a male, what is the major dominant hormone that makes me who I am as a male, just is in general? It, is it testosterone? 100% right. Okay. 100% right. Okay. Now, as a woman, you have a predominant hormone. Uh, which one do you think makes you both physically and mentally who you are? Estrogen. What if I told you estrogen is not a hormone that you've been lied to? Oh. Okay, what is it? I don't know. I wouldn't See, be surprised. No, but, I'm not a science person. <laughs> I know. But think about this though. But here's, here's what I want women to understand about this. Most women don't understand the biology of what they have. So therefore, they don't understand the physical and psychological things that happen with them. So they think there's wrong. Or watch this. If they get abnormal, it can change your thinking. Mm-hmm. A woman could even think she's a guy. We're going to get into that. But hold the thing. Wow. But the idea is this. We're going to get down there. We're going okay. there. Okay. okay? And here's what happens. So, so here's what happens. Estrogen is not a hormone. Estrogen is a term that represents many hormones. And what I realized with every physical and psychological condition that women were suffering with, and even men, that they were not testing women properly. They weren't getting the complete picture, but they were making judgments on people's physical and mental health based on incomplete information. So I started calling up labs all over the world, say, listen, can we measure things? No joke. I called the largest lab in the world. And I said, can we measure these? He said, yes, but why? And insurance doesn't pay for them. And I'm like, no, I have a very sick, AKA girlfriend, AKA fiance, and now my wife of 22 years, mm-hmm. um, that was very sick. And then I started to test, and then I realized that guess what? Not only are female hormones not described to women so they can make great judgments of what happened to them physically and mentally, but they're being misled and lied to. And now of today, now today, we're being lied to that abnormal hormonal problems are actually should be accepted as normal. Because if all of a sudden, here, watch this. Mm -hmm. If I were to take synthetic testosterone and inject you with that pearl, you would start to take on male characteristics, both physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. And just because you thought you were a guy, I would say, listen, no, no, no. You're taking a outside source that's going to cause you to think and act differently, even Mm -hmm. and biologically change. So see, so go ahead. No, so I have a question about that. So is it like yep. when women are in male dominated like fields, does it elevate our testosterone at all? Because I've, I've wondered it, it if, actually, the, I've wondered if there's can. some link between because I was a super big tomboy like growing up. I just never yep. was into the girly stuff, but I played competitive yep. sports. So that's like more of a, a male dominated industry. What, whenever you put your body into the state of fight or flight mm-hmm. or an anabolic state like athletics, your tissues will change. They will. And because remember, hormones by definition stand for messenger. So for example, if you are, you are starting to lift weights and you're starting to do things that once again, you know, males are supposed to do when it comes to their characteristics, mm-hmm. your body can force that production. And it does, and that's why if you've ever noticed, if women exercise like men, they will start to have a male type body. But the minute that they stop exercising to that level, they will start to get their curves back. That's why when I show women that they exercise during the wrong times, because here's what happens. So let's go back to this. So all of a sudden, to, to fast forward the story, once I realized Christy had some estrogen problems, some, the ones that the doctors never looked for, I started looking at how to get them back to normal. And now what happens is this. We have four beautiful daughters. Oh, wow. And all the current thinking said, this can't happen. So 24 years ago, when I was 24 years old, I started applying this to now men and women. 
and it started to affect them both physically and psychologically. And then our clinical results started. And I was a poor country kid that started one office mm -hmm. to now actually having wellness way offices all over the United States and now branching Europe and that. Because why? Because as people say, when they get good information and it now makes life changing things, people mm -hmm. will flock to it like crazy. Mm -hmm. And we need to actually get that kind of information out there because it's related so much to your stuff today. Because here's what happens this. If a woman has a, once again, sometimes a, a male dominated trait, mm -hmm. there can be some hormonal balances that do that. And when you start to uh, get them back to normal and balance them, they start going back to their female characteristics. And see, that's why if you ever notice, you are an athlete, Pearl. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because women don't know how to take care of their hormones, it's very common for athletes, to female athletes, to skip, delay, or even uh, not have their cycle because they throw their hormonal system off so dramatically mm -hmm. that they can start to take that. That's why you'll see them become more manly and even more of a manly body style mm -hmm. until they get their hormones back to normal. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so it does, because then my question is like, how, how do you fix it then? If, if women, well, like, would you say most women's hormones are off now? Um, yes, they're dramatically off, okay? Now, so you have to look and go, and here, and you started the right question. Instead of actually asking how to balance them, because here's what happens. Mm -hmm. You are genetically programmed to have normal hormones. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. So when they're trying to say that I am made this way, that I'm, I, uh, I was born in this body, but I'm really this way, I'm going, no, that's not true. Let me explain. For example, you, let's say your testosterone levels as a female mm -hmm. would be, let's say, on the average range of 25, mm -hmm. okay? Mine's supposed to be well above 500, okay? I know the ranges go a little bit lower, but that's because they allow testosterone to go too low in males. But here's the point. If you start taking testosterone at levels to get up to 400 or 300, mm -hmm. your body will change, both mentally and physically. But the minute that you stop taking that hormone, what does your body genetically bring those levels back down to? Roughly 25, okay? okay? So really what happens is the question should be is, what is throwing off my hormones? Mm -hmm. What is the thing that actually is disrupting them? Well, once again, I always say there's three major stressors that do it. And I will actually tell you the number one stressor I see that does it. And you're going to see this in cultures like crazy. Number one, for, for um, when you look at the three things, let's call trauma, toxins, and thoughts. Okay. okay. And therefore, remember, you're an athlete. You right. can do, you can, you can physically hurt yourself, create inflammatory responses. There's going to be hormonal changes. Mm -hmm. You can legitimately, once again, have these things happen to your body where there's a hormonal reaction and you can literally drain your body of it. If there's, uh, if there's constant stress on the body physically. So that's why women that exercise too much, women that actually are too athletic during the wrong times, because women's hormones change four times in the month here. I, I want you to think about this about Pearl. Okay. The women do not understand this. If you look at a woman's cycle through the month, the, her estrogens and progesterones circulate through the month and they're different. And I looked and said, they're different four times a month. That means a woman is mentally and physically different four times. Guys, let me say something, because I know there's a lot of guys that watch your show. Mm -hmm. When you marry a woman, you actually marry four different women. Okay. Because they're psychologically different every week. Now on the flip side, for you women to understand this a little bit more, ladies, there's one week that you'll get up and put your bra on and it's all nice and full. Next week, you put your bra on and they're a bunch of shriveled raisins, okay? <laughs> You're like, what happened? Your body, once again, physically changes each week. Now, why that is so important is this. When a woman exercises, I've even written out a chart when women can do high-intensity exercise, when they shouldn't even think of doing that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And women that push themselves on a daily basis because they, okay, I, I need to exercise at this high level or even be a pro athlete or an athlete, you understand? If you don't know how to fuel your body, your tanks are going to run out. And that's when you see all those cyclic changes. Mm -hmm. So now toxins, you can eat horribly bad. You can put toxins on your skin. You can actually put toxic makeup. All these things are endocrine disruptors, mm -hmm. but guess what? Those two are not as important as the third one. Thoughts, Thoughts mental stress, okay. mental stress drains and destroys female hormones. Now watch this. And here's a red pill thing for you. And here's where, here is where every aspect of culture and feminism has hurt women. Here, by nature, if we look at your progesterone, which balances all your good estrogens, it converts into other hormones called cortisone and cortisol. See, therefore, when women go through high mental stress, they will deplete their hormones. When men go under stress, 
actually increases their hormones. They were biologically and physically meant to handle stressors. They were. Wow. It's like, that's why. And so that, would, to me, talk about a big red pill moment for everybody is I'm just walking around. I don't care about your personal debates and what people think. I'm sitting there trying to protect women by saying, listen, it's my job to protect you from the stress because it's going to physically hurt you and lead to bad hormones, which is going to disrupt your life, both mentally and physically. And you may end up with infertility, PCOS, cancers, mental disorders, all these things from just the aspect of you're trying to enter a world that can be very stressful and you're supposed to be protected too, because if you're not protected, you're going to end up sick. Mm -hmm. so, so, so trauma, so women, what screws up our hormones is trauma, toxins, and thoughts. And the worst one is thoughts. Yep. So high stress. By far. Uh, so what about men? Teens. Why are the men more feminine now? Okay. It's very simple. Let's go through the basic biology of this. Okay. And let's, let's, let's put out a stat. And then we're going to work backwards. Okay. One out of every hundred breast cancer diagnosis now are males. Okay. Very simple statistics. Now, what does that have to do with all things going on here? Well, here's what happens. Testosterone is a very aggressive, a very competitive, a very laser focus. It's what it does for us. That it's, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. and it's being treated like it's bad unless you're in sports. Guys, understand this. Sports is the only thing men are allowed to be men on anymore. But if they try to put it into the work world or the home world or anything like that, now it's toxic. And I'm like going, masculine. you are working it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But think about this. Now, the majority of testosterone for guys is very simply made. You need a couple brain hormones and some ingredients, some cholesterol, uh, and we'll get to that. Some cholesterol, some zinc, some other things, and you can produce the hormone testosterone. But here's the problem. I can show you thousands, thousands and thousands of labs where they'll come at low testosterone. And because our current healthcare system doesn't say, all right, what we're gonna do is just gonna give you now synthetic testosterone, which is very detrimental. It, we he'd need to go, why is it off? Where did it go? Mm -hmm. Because it's produced, but just like certain hormones, so, they can convert to other forms. So what they'll do is they'll try to like fix it by putting in a drug, but they don't talk about like what the original problem was. Right. Right, that's and, what you're and saying. I'm gonna show you, and, I'm, and I'm gonna show you the number one problem. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is, and you're going to notice this, and it's going to hit home to most people. If you look at, for example, that testosterone is all produced, and now instead of doing the, the factors it does, what happens is we do things to our bodies that once again can cause those hormones to be depleted and converted, and they can convert to estrogens. And then what happens is, now wait, estrogens are more female dominated. Yes, males can convert their testosterone into estrogens, and one of the major factors that do that is the overconsumption of sugar because sugar now too causes the aromatasing so, of testosterone. Really? So too much sugar makes men more feminine? Yes, because what it does, well, here, let's do this. Okay. Let's change that phrase a little bit just so we stay within biology. Okay. When testosterone, once again, when we have an overconsumption, because remember, our body runs on sugar, but people do too much of it, especially males. Because when males are stressed out, just like females, they like to eat, they like to do things that way, but they don't grab. Here, watch this, Pearl. I, I, I know you a little bit, but I imagine this. You've been through stress. You've been through things. And if you're stressed out, you go to your people and go, oh, man, I'm just so stressed out. I just crave an organic salad. No, you no, see? no. No, that's the point. Yeah, see, we yeah. always crave because our body runs on sugar. We crave more sugar things. The sad part is we overconsume it. We need sugar. So don't think I'm against sugar. We need it. But the sad part is what we do now is we end up having these things that now overconsume, which now causes certain things to happen in our body, and it converts to estrogens. And now, if I were to give this, we know this, if I were to now inject synthetic estradiol in a guy, he will start to take on all the what kind of characteristics? Feminine, Female characteristics. Yeah. He will start to gain breasts. He'll start. It's already happening without yeah. hormone therapy. Look at man bodies today. The the, the dad bod. Yeah. Guys, I'm sorry. The dad matter. bod's disgusting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So why? And it's like why is everyone yeah. so fat? Like it's the men and the women. Everybody's it's like fat, fat, fatties. You know, everywhere. So it's like why well, why do why are there whales? It's like whales everywhere. <laughs> Is, well, it, is it the food supply? Because it wasn't like that 100 years ago. Like, what changed? It wasn't. It wasn't. Our food has changed, but our environment has changed dramatically, too. Let me give you an example, okay? Now, I can pull up a great journal of nutrition that way and, and show you that, for, that just even the hormones that can cause weight, the hormones that can cause other conditions there, you know, we have, we have 
we have uh, taken certain foods that they think are good, but they're, they're not that great. And if you look at having some form of soy, uh, you know, and they're giving babies soy formulas and they're giving and they're causing hormonal disruptions and things like that at a young soy, age. Soy so it's, it's bad. I, I, I encourage, especially men, but also women that have any kind of estrogen problems mm -hmm. uh, to avoid it because there can be some negative effects to it that can lead to hormones. And see, here's what happens. When you look at hormonal disruptors, there's so many multifactorial things. I mean, the fact this. No dope. I will say in my clinical experience of 24 years, and I've looked at, and I will, and I will underestimate, I've looked at well over 100,000 female hormone labs done properly, that mental stress really dominates them. Men, it's actually their, their habits. Now, men with mental stress can, can mess up some things, but what it does for them, it also helps their testosterone because it's aggression. If I were to attack I saw your studio, your, your, the man setting up your studio before we started, mm -hmm. and guess what happens? If I were to attack him, his testosterone would jump up. Mm -hmm. If I were to physically attack you, your female hormones who make you are will start to deplete. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So there's multiple things that can happen, but we are affected similar in a couple ways. And I believe that how we, you know, I, you know I've, I've said this. It's an old saying, you are what you eat. I don't want to put rotten lumber into a house I want to build. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect you psychologically and physically. So I always want to stay more on, because uh, I don't like to debate about emotional stuff. I like mm -hmm. to stay, of course, say, listen, that when you see estrogens elevate in a man, you're going to, it's going to express feminine characteristics. Okay. It does. So your argument, ain't not yours, anybody's argument um, that says, well, no, no, it's not, bio yeah, it's all biological. So I recently had this. I recently had a, a young lady who was 18 years old. Um, she wanted to take, she believed that she was a boy. And I'm not going to sit there and argue with people. I will tell you this, Pearl. I've sat across these for, for way before it became even popular. Mm -hmm. I sat across from people that thought they were transgender even 20 years ago. And they truly believe it. They truly in their heart believe it, okay? And I sat across this young lady that thought she was a boy. I even, I just, because this is me, I'm just a mm -hmm. Christian person. So I believe everybody, I believe everybody gets respect in my view, regardless of we have different beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so I even called her by her guy name. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here's what happens this. I said to, and the, the, now that her parents have any control of her, she wants to start taking hormone therapy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I said, could you do me a favor? Can I see your hormone labs? And she goes, well, I never had any done. I said, wait, wait, wait. So they're going to do which they consider ethical, which I think is disgusting. They're going to start putting synthetic hormones in you to try to transition you. Can you do me a favor? Can we at least get your labs? Because if your testosterone levels are normal and they give you to three, 400, go see what happens to women if those levels get elevated that for a long period of time. PCOS, other androgen type conditions that lead to diseases and even cancer. Mm -hmm. So how is it as a doctor, we take an oath first, do no harm. Well, get this. We had her labs done. She was already testosterone elevated. What was she at? So, so you said 25 was normal. What was she at? Well, it can, you can go as high as 48 based on your lab ranges that way. But she was at like 90, wow. which would be double the ranges. So of no course, she, if you look at her. I'm so curious what mine would be. I'm like so curious because well, I feel like mine's probably elevated because of all the sports I did. Like I feel like it probably well, is. Go ahead. And it, and it can be because here's what happens. During sports, you guys feel this. When you aggressively push yourself, your adrenals are going to reach certain corticosteroids, certain cortisol, certain testosterone, certain epinephrine, certain norepinephrine. And the thing is, all those things are measurable. So all I started to do when it started with my wife 24 years ago, I said, you suffer from these physical and mental things. Let's measure it. So now if you believe you're transgender, which guess what? You can believe what you want. I, I, here, watch this, ladies. People want to argue this. Well, it's just a belief. Well, ladies, let me ask you a question. Let's just look at even if your cycle is normal, there's no hormonal problems. Mm -hmm. You change four times in a month. Mm -hmm. You experience different things every week based on your hormone levels. Do you understand? Hormone levels actually get you to view the world the way it is. Really? Because if your levels are low, if your levels are low, it's going to be depressed levels. You will see the world as a depressive, bad thing. See, it changes the view. So how could person not think they're a boy or girl or something like that? See, I don't have those arguments. I go, let's just measure hormones mm -hmm. and everyone I've ever dealt with.
And remember, and I have hundreds of doctors. I have trained thousands of doctors. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just one little clinic, okay? I've actually started to, to speak in this. Now I speak on all stages, medical, natural, uh, political, all these things. Say, hey, guys, let's stop having emotional arguments. Let's look at the biologies, people, because maybe they're suffering on the inside. Because when my wife was said, you can't have children, there was something internally that she had no control over. Ladies, you know this. You have no control over it, and therefore you think there's something wrong. Women don't realize as their emotions go up and down, they're like, Doc, I feel like I'm all over the place. I'm like, good, that's called being a woman. Uh <laughs> what week are you in? And men, women come and go, Doc, you gave me mental peace because, see, unlike guys, testosterone levels go up and they stay very the same most of the time. They only have a little change. They only have a little change in the morning, okay? And testosterone's a little bit higher in the morning than it is at nighttime. Ladies, how could you tell that on your man? He wakes up in the morning and guess what happens? It's out of his control. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He has this morning erection. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And see, but see, see, you would laugh about this, but we know this. And now I'm speaking to you. So everything I just talked to you about, you go look up in a book. Mm -hmm. But ladies, you change four times in the month. And it, you always ask, uh, Pearl, I absolutely love your show. Mm -hmm. And you always, you always ask a question and say, you know, what do men and women have wrong about each other? Well, and they give all these answers. And I love all their answers. I absolutely do. Mm -hmm. But my perspective is totally different. It's very difficult to understand a woman when you don't understand their hormones that they change every week. And so when you go into a relationship, you have to understand that you're going to deal with four different individuals every single month. Mm -hmm. And what women do, what men do, they go, well, she's all over the place. I'm like, yeah, it's called being in a relationship with a woman. Now, they're wrong. Yes, mm -hmm. if there's bad hormones, it's dramatic, and it's all over, and there's, mm -hmm. there, there's, there's major issues. But we have to understand that these hormonal effects are very biological. It can lead to some very devastating things. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about, this is something I wrote down from earlier. You said you were diagnosed with Asperger's and then like they- you Nope, were... juvenile delinquent. Oh, See, I'm they would have, if, if, I, if it would have been counselors today, because I know a lot of great counselors that give diagnoses and, and psychiatrists and some of that. Mm -hmm. And I was explaining my history, okay? No, my history back then as a counselor, they said I was a juvenile delinquent. That was what they called me back then, mm -hmm. okay? Um, because of my behavioral, because here's what happens is I would sit there and I would bounce. I couldn't focus. I actually, no joke, I, I couldn't read. I read my first book when I was finally in high school uh, because as I started to change my internal things, my psychology started to change really? and I started to change my food so, and I started to change everything. Okay, yep. so in a way, like you were diagnosed, uh, for, I forgot the word you used, but you, you had a diagnosis of like an issue and you fixed it through food. Yep. Yeah, well, I fixed it through many reasons. Number one, I started to find those stressors to my body. Mm -hmm. And then I started to give my body what it needed in order to grow and repair. You know, we, we look at this, we look at uh, one thing I want you to talk about, which is very devastating, which our whole world has been misled by, even over in your country, we have correlated so much uh, uh, problems with cholesterol, mm -hmm. that we don't understand that every cell in our body, especially our brain needs cholesterol. So when they put men on statin drugs, they by nature lower one of the major building blocks to testosterone and other hormones. That's why if you look at some of the negative side effects of certain medications, they can lower hormones because they interfere and disrupt some of the body that way. So what happened is this. So I said, listen, if I want to keep my testosterone good, I need certain things in my body, including cholesterol, which is contraindicated for most people's beliefs in cholesterol. And so here's what happens. That's why when you see statin drugs taken at a high level, you start to see dramatic changes in testosterone, dramatic ones that are low. See, so we talk about there's more than th th there's more things that disrupt it. So then you have to look and go, hey, listen, if I want to fuel my body to be athletic, for example, if you're a volleyball player, a basketball player, a swimmer, and you are intensely working out every single day, athletes are not taught how to fuel their body. Here, I have walked in with many sports professional sports teams, uh, pro golfers and some of that, and you'd be surprised how bad they eat. You I'm can walk surprised. into an NFL stadium and they have cereals and all these things mm -hmm. that are very detrimental and actually even working against. And I look at going, you want your body to run at a high level, yet you're putting crappy feel into it well, it doesn't make any sense well, when you think about it it's like when you the life of an athlete like i used to work out like four or five hours a day so mm -hmm. like i because i would do two sports so i would do a three-hour practice and a two-hour practice yeah. what time do you really have to cook you just grab stuff 
Yep. So, yep. and the sad part is this, but imagine this, that is your high performance machine. Do you understand that people, if they, if, if they bought a high end car, they're not putting crappy fuel in it. Right. It, we, we, we look at things, we put the best in our houses, we put the best in our stuff, but when it, we've so been convinced mm -hmm. and I believe that's the matrix and stuff like that. They need you sick because healthcare is one of the biggest businesses. We saw that over the last three years mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And the sad part is, and we missed, they misled people in the very wrong direction. And believe it or not, what they did to the people the last three years made them very sick, made them very sick. So it's really saddened. So not only it's like removing those stressors, let's call it the three T's. I always call it three T's because it gives people something to work on. But then we need to actually figure out what each person's buy needs. And everybody needs something a little bit different because without it, always remember this, Pearl, if hormonal imbal imbalances are there, there's physical and psychological consequences to the fact of major diseases, but also major psychological things. And so when it comes to some of the things, when I watch people debate about the whole transgender thing, mm -hmm. my first thing is I'm empathetic towards them because if they have hormonal imbalances, how they view the world, how they see the world, how they see other people, even how they see themselves dramatically changes because that's what estrogens, that's what testosterone, that's what dopamine, that's what serotonin does to their brain. And if it's in balance, I'm empathetic and very sympathetic for them because they're suffering. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I always think they have like a mental disorder. Do you think I'm wrong? Um, well, let's, let's make this um, a little bit more understandable so people know what that means. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for example, if we look at normal biology and normal physiology, there's going to be certain levels of hormones and tissues and things like that that change and adapt to all the things that go on. But Pearl, you know this. Mm -hmm. If you hit your, if you exercise like you're doing four hours a day, and let's say you're, let's say you're progesterone depleted, it could actually affect your cycle. You could skip it. You could delay it. It could be heavier periods. It could be all these things. Mm -hmm. But those same hormones, those same chemicals, let's just call them generally, those same neurotransmitters also are affected in the brain. Mm -hmm. So there will be an imbalance. So will there be a mental manifestation that's not normal? So if you want to call that a mental disorder, sure, because that's what would be considered. Oh. But I want you to, I, so it's like something, Suzanne, something's wrong, but a lot of times that's it's my fixable. point. That's my point. But it's, like, so, but and, it's and, like the more they feed into it, they just make it worse. And what someone could have been it, fixed, now they're like a crazy person. Right. And, and instead of this, instead, and this is what drives me nuts is we are, instead of saying, Hey, listen, something's wrong. They want you to accept it as normal. And I can't Pearl. I can't. Right. That's like, that's like this here, here, I'll give you a simpler example. And this drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that if a young lady gets her cycle and she's cramping and blowing out all these problems and the doctor gives her a diagnosis of PMS, it's like, it's so common that we accept it as normal. And here's what happened, made my book an international bestseller. It's called, I disagree. Do not confuse common with normal. They've been doing this for a long time here. If a, if a, if a, if a, if a fellow woman came up to you and said, ah, you know, Pearl, I have my cycle. I'm bloaty. I'm crampy. Some of this it's called PMS mm -hmm. premenstrual syndrome. It's not called premenstrual normal. It's just that we accept it as normal because it's so common. And now with, with mental disorders and mental things, we're trying to make people accept it as normal. No, it's not but normal. So, so a lot of the wrong. stuff like depression, anxiety, all that stuff, like something is wrong. And a lot it's of times wrong. it's fixable, but they'll put, throw drugs at the problem. Well, yeah, because here's what happens to this. Mm -hmm. If I was a business, and I could actually convince you that you need to take this the rest of your life and you're stuck on it and you have no control. Do you understand? Right. The reason why they have convinced people they have they, it's genetic and, and all these things because then it's out of your control and you have to come to a smart experts and we will tell you what you need to do the rest of your life. And guess what happens? It doesn't get anything better and you have a customer for the rest of your life. It's a medical matrix. It's a medical matrix that keeps these people medically enslaved in the aspects of these stuff. And I'm sorry, but I've seen this. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the doctors hold, hard to believe it, say, you need to take this statin drug the rest of your life. Well, if you believe that cholesterol me, is a problem and it's elevated, why is it off? Just me, why? I listened to um, these recordings from like the 1900s and it was like um, a project on on slavery, right? And they like recorded the um, guys that like were former slaves, like their, their experiences as, as slaves, right? And the guys were like 90, 100 years old, 110. And it was kind of crazy how 100 years ago they were so mentally like clear. Where if I speak yep. to someone that's like, 
Like they, they made perfect sense where if I speak to like my grandma is, is a bit sick now and it's like speaking to her, it's you, you can just tell it's like a little cloudy. She's not all the way. Yep. And it was it blew my mind how 100 years ago there was not nearly as many medical advances, I, I would think. But these these guys were like genuinely so like their minds were so clear. I, I don't know if that makes sense. Yep. Well, of course it does. But mm-hmm. if you look at what's happened over time. We live in a more toxic world. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking even just, for example, this. I know it sounds uh, funny, ladies, but I want you to think about this. If you understand, the majority of your audience, and I mean this very very nicely, but the majority of your audience, I've watched your girls on your show. Mm-hmm. You know what the first thing I think about when I see all the girls all dialed up in all their makeup? Man, they put a lot of toxic endocrine things on their skin that's going to absorb in, and it's going to cause endocrine disruptions that's going to make them both physically and mentally off. Okay, tell me, what does now that are, mean? Now watch this. Here, watch this. Mm-hmm. If you look at here, people get up and women come and say, Doc, I don't know why I'm sick. I say, okay, you got up this morning. What did you do? Well, you showered. Well, did you have a filter on or did you just shower in chlorine? Well, chlorine, okay, toxin. Okay, did you brush your teeth? Yes. Did you use Crest Colgate and all the other toxic toothpaste? Yes. Okay, uh, did you use shampoo? Yes, toxic. Did you did you actually put makeup on? Yes. Okay, all junk, toxic. Okay, now there's all good forms of these things. Okay, mm-hmm. but now let's do this. Uh, what'd you have for what'd you have for uh, breakfast? Oh, I had a bagel. Or they're gluten, all our things are, are are inflammatory. And then I had a soy latte. Okay, there you go. And a good disruptor mm-hmm. also this. And then what happens is I went to work and I stressed out like crazy and I didn't sleep well. And then people go, I wonder why I'm sick. And you saying? And see, that's the thing. If you go back, like you said, a hundred years ago, they didn't have what, that stuff. Everything was more they didn't natural, have that stuff. Right? Now they're wrong. What and that's switched? why it's the greatest term. Mm-hmm. What's that? What switched? Um, convenient. Here, watch this. Let's start here. Okay. You know this. You know this. You just gave me this answer. Mm-hmm. Food has been transformed from quality to speed. Because okay. why? Busy lives. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. And right. if you look at if you look at this, let's even go at makeups. Makeups, any product they're trying to make cheaper and faster. But you can get a good you can get a good eyeliner, a good a lotion, a good uh, a skin cream, good everything. It's just that when you use better ingredients, it costs more. So people have moved everything towards speed, Cheap. convenience, and cost instead of quality. Okay. And it's it's sad because it's hurting them. And I come along and say, hey, listen. You have all these endocrine disruptors. And then on top of it, ladies, after all those things you do, you enter a world and here, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, and this, uh, once again, will appeal to you, but it might not appeal to a lot of people. If you look at the business world, now I started out, this is not a joke, Pearl, I started out with $500. That's it. I had a good idea. I had a heart to, to help women, especially with their hormones. And I built an international company five hundred dollars. I didn't come from a rich family. I was I started from nothing that way, and I built it up. Mm-hmm. But you know what happens? This I built it up because I had some very common characteristics. Once again, of a male. Because here I'm going to give you an example, and I and I try to tell people this all the time. If you look at the characteristics of a male that once again help them in the world of business, comp- competitive, you know, confident, decisive. Um, laser focus, all these factors, which are actually testosterone traits. See, that's a competitive, and that's why people say, well, a patriarch. No, here's what happens. Society is built on those things because you know what competition does? Here, watch this, Pearl. You're an athlete. Mm-hmm. If you are competitive, you're going to get the best of the best people. And if you're not competitive with yourself, you don't get the best. So you need competition, the psychology competition to make quality, to make all the things that are, that are good in the world. But you know what something is this? That is mainly a male-dominated trait. So now women, which actually have their estrogens, give them much different qualities, nurturing, compassionate, caring, peace, all these things. I watch these guys. I watch these guys do this. And I've always told this because my whole hormone seminar Mm -hmm. is understand the physical and psychological things of a woman. And I said, women, I've said this for 20 years. Say, listen, a man goes out and is competitive. And I actually know a lot of good professional athletes they go there knowing that their job is going to be stole from them every day if they don't stay at a high level. Mm-hmm. So last thing that they want to do is come home and compete at home. Mm-hmm. They need that nurturing, that peace, that right. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and here's what happens. And that's the, that's the elements of a woman. So I always tell people, society is created by the, by the conditions, the testosterone of men. And homes and nurturing and all the things that everybody needs, including kids, including men themselves, are based at, but now what they're trying to do, they're trying to take the home life 
and make it into the world life and it'll never succeed because when you hear, because you know why? Because a compassionate mom doesn't want to see another child lose. In general, remember, we're speaking about generals, not exceptions. See, because a lot of times people like to talk about exceptions to rule. Because right. Pearl, you may be an exception. You may be yelling at your future kids going, come on, let's go. Yeah. yeah. But the average mom, right. but the average mom is not that way. Mm -hmm. So therefore is this. So then guess what happens? So they say, we want everybody to win. If you bring that into the work world, guess what happens? You're gonna get destroyed. Mm -hmm. So all yeah, based on biology. Women, women want everyone to win. That's really true. And I can even say that like being a girl in business, like I, I, I help my dad helps me a lot because I'm just not very good at making like cutthroat decisions, you know, and sometimes yes. you really have to. Um, okay, so what okay, what do we eat? Like there's this new trend on Twitter called carnivore. Is that I had a carnivore lady on my show and she was saying how she eats like 10 eggs in the morning. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of eggs. Is that the way the world's going, carnivore? Okay, so so let's look at this. And remember, my education background, where I initially went to college for was nutrition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna get to that world. So here's what happens. Um, I, just did a, I just did a video went viral on this on my Instagram. And I, people say, Doc, do you like carnivore diet? Well, people think I like the carnivore diet because if you look at any nutrition book across the world, you still look at any research, the most nutrient dense foods in the world are organ meats by far, mm -hmm. okay? Now I'm fasting right now, which fasting is phenomenal for men, not for women, not for women. Men and women are different, okay? okay. But the idea is this. So I'm not gonna have liver today, but I usually have some liver worse. I usually have some organ meat every single day, which would be considered carnivore. But see, here's what happens this. Most of the carnivore diets, they really look at just muscle meats. And if you look at the biology of, of, of the world, you ever look at an animal, if, if an animal attacks another animal, the dominant lion, guess what he eats first? The so organ meats. So organ meats are by far the most nutritious. And then the rest of the tribe, the rest of the pack gets mm -hmm. all the muscle meats, okay? So when you look at history of nutrition, Organ meats were always the main thing that they ate. Actually, go back to, you know, go back to, you know, times and go back to you guys' history, even over in England, everything. Remember, royalty got the organs, all the other people got the muscles because they're the most dense nutrient things on the planet. All right. Now, people say, well, Doc, do you need more than that? Absolutely. So, do I believe that people miss their vital nutrients because of this whole aspect of not having meat? Sure, they do. Meat is extremely important. I would like to see a combination of, of certain things like organ meats, some muscle meats, things that have high fiber. See, that's where I differ. I think that we need, I am a big fan of fiber-based foods because it also helps regulate your blood sugar. That's why I like sauerkraut and other fibers and chicory root and things like that that can be put in our diet on a regular basis because fiber is extremely important. The bad part is this, is we've actually been convinced that our good fibers come from our grains. Nah, I'm, I'm not a fan of grains. I really am not. Um, so therefore, because if we look at some of the things, the obesity and stuff that, we can actually get our blood sugars up too high. Remember, you need sugar. You do. But people overconsume it. They do. They just have too much of it. So I... here's what happens. Mm -hmm. So do I believe that people would do a little bit better if they moved a little bit more carnivore? Yes. But you still need your fiber-based things and fermented foods. So I tell people, once again, reduce the overall consumption of your sugar. That's going to help both men and women. Okay. Now, once again, you still need sugar. Let me just tell you, because you remember, because you need to, you, you, in keeping your calorie intake down is pretty good because calories is just a unit of energy and we actually make sometimes consume too much. Mm -hmm. Then you need, you need good fibers. You really do. And that's why I'm big on that. You need good organ meats. Uh, you need to actually, and one thing I also do like is sprouts because sprouts are very good. They have certain chemicals in. Um, there's a chemical in one of my favorite sprouts, broccoli sprouts, that they try to patent as a drug. Go back to it's well documented. They tried to patent sulforaphane as a drug because it's effect on cancer, but it went to the Supreme Court in the United States and they could not patent it because it's a natural substance. Natural substances are extremely, extremely powerful. There's an old saying that the whole world knows, you know, that we talk about is let food by that be thy medicine, but let medicine be thy food. We need to start eating our medicinal herbs and things like that that actually help our body do things. So, so those are some basics. So as long as I can remember, I've always been really good at training, but really bad at nutrition. I've yes. always, I, one time I felt like I was too fat. So I just ran a marathon in like Ooh. three months. I just decided I was going to do it and I could just do it. So I've always been yep. really good 
overall at training, right? I mean, some yeah. years are better than others, but I've never, yeah. and I've been basically like the same weight since high school. Like I really haven't. Mm -hmm. I gained a lot of weight right after college because I was, wasn't working out four hours a day anymore, you know, but once right. I adjusted to that, got back down, whatever. How do you, because I just feel like I don't even know what life is like without being addicted to sugar. I'm like, I don't even, sure. I feel like I've tried so many times to like cut it or, and I just, I have been so incredibly unsuccessful. So how do you, yep. how do you fix your eating like that? Okay. So here's what happens. Think about as a doctor. Um, I don't care if you're a male or a woman, like I said, uh, sugar is very palatable. Sugar actually is very mentally uh, um, satisfying. That's why when we're stressed, what do we crave? So you have to do this. You have to, uh, you know, compensate as I tell people for their sassy habits. Let me give you an example. I kind of, I kind of gave you right there. Mm -hmm. If you are going to consume some sugar, once again, I'm not going to encourage it, but do this. You need to, you need to do the things that negate the aspects of sugar. So that's why fiber is big. That's why if you ever look at a product, it could say on the back, it could say four grams of sugar, but as four grams of fiber, it negates the sugar aspect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second of all, Watch this. This is so basic and basic research. Mm -hmm. If you were to just jump online and type in an herb called gymnema, mm -hmm. okay, let me spell it for you. G-Y-M-N-E-M-A. See, what happens is there's constituents within that herb that bind onto your sugar receptors. So therefore, there's no lock and key. The lock and key is taken up by that acid. And therefore, as sugar comes through to be absorbed in the system, it can't and you just kind of poop it out. Mm -hmm. So you get the you get the mental aspect of having something sweet for all the taste buds that way, but your absorption goes down, okay? Mm -hmm. Also, once again, you can compensate, once again, with some physical activity. Mm -hmm. See, so there's always a balance. You have to, if you're sassy in one area, you better be darn good in another. Mm -hmm. It's just that the majority of people are not taught that. They're said, hey, listen, ah, get obese, eat a lot of sugar. I'm gonna give you this, this drug called insulin. And if you, if you actually look at your country over there, 10% of your budget goes who's, towards who's medical things that are your guys, the England. Oh, you're Aren't not you American, England? right? <laughs> yes, I knew you're American because yeah, you're yeah. from there, but you're based in England <laughs> right, right now, right, aren't you? Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so it's that. So I know, because you're from, you're from the Midwest. If yeah, I remember, yeah, right, I'm from place, Chicago. So. <laughs> exactly. So we grew up only three hours from each other. Yeah. But the idea is this, but I want you to think about this. And, and the reason why I bring this up is because people have this arguments like people have the arguments between you know transgenders are choice and it's not a choice and they argue about that way well we have these arguments when it comes to healthcare of socialized medicine compared to private pay and all stuff like this i'm like listen if you have a bad idea it doesn't matter who pays for it right. you can have you can have to pay for it or you can pay for it it's still a bad idea mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you have over here private pay and insulin or over there in england insulin guess what happens it's still a bad idea because you're just paladating people's bad behaviors that they need to actually adapt their lifestyle to right so again, what are so, your what are your so your tips if you're addicted to sugar? Take gem gym gem and gym nemma. Gym nemma. Yes. Well, remember, gymnema. number one, number one. What I do is once again start with fiber because you can counteract a lot of your sugar absorption and your things from fiber. Okay. Number two, may, uh, you can take some things like gym nemma. You can you can compensate with some things like golden seal or uh, berry berum. There's there's things that you can do that will, but once again, those are just natural compensations for bad habits. Okay. Um, and then physical activity is very important, obviously, because you are going to try, remember, there is a little bit of, you know, obviously sugar has calories. So does everything else have calories. And we want to, you know, obviously try to reduce that calorie intake because the unit of energy is you can only spend so much energy per day, but you can increase your energy movement and watch this Think of this way. You can stimulate thyroid effect by something so simple. And I have women do this all the time. Ladies, this is so simple and so easy to do. For example, get this. Do you understand that something that's very popular right now is ice baths? Okay. Now let's think about this. What happens? Well, you ever you ever look at even swimmers in general? What they do is they jump in actually cold water because the pools are 68 degrees and they seem like they're in great shape. Yes, there is physical activity, but do you understand the loss of heat? The transfer of heat from the from the body to the water is dramatic. Mm -hmm. And then your body starts to kick in, kick in once again. Um, your thyroid, which is one of your major hormones that produce uh, like T3 for metabolism. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what happens? So if we can lower the body temperature, that's why it seems to help women with weight loss or even men. But I want to show you something easier, much easier. It's called the mammalian diver reflex. Do you understand that the majority of our cold receptors are not in our body, they're on our neck and head. 
So you can actually do this, and this is good for stress. This is great for stress because they show that when you uh, uh, you put your head underwater, your body by nature starts to slow its heart rate down, puts it in a calming state. So what you need to do every morning, wake up, get a good old bucket of ice water, and put your head underwater and try to hold your breath for a little bit. That will help you with metabolism. That will help you with calming neurotransmitters. That will help you with dopamine. That will help you with your do thyroid. You do that? What's that? Do you do that in the morning? You like dunk your head? I actually dunk my whole body. And I actually, hold, I, if you ever see, go back on my Instagram. Okay. You'll see me now. I'm fasting right now. Women, don't fast. Whole nother thing. It's a, it's, they, they got this totally wrong. Men, it's essential for their hormones to fast. It's essential for their life to fast. Um, women, it's going to destroy your hormones. It's going to destroy some things. Now, once again, we can go into detail that. Mm -hmm. But the idea is this. You bet your butt. I jump in. Like this morning, I threw. I had a bucket of ice. It's still cold over here. You know, it's like in the Midwest during April. Mm -hmm. And I jumped in there. I try to stay in there for at least uh, three to six minutes. Um, and the idea is then I actually, I, there's ice in there. I brought my head under. And I hold my breath. And I calm myself. And it's fantastic. You get, you get dopamine response. You get epinephrine, norepinephrine. And it's known psychologically to keep that brain aspect for at least six to eight hours. Some of the greatest neurologists and neuroscientists in the world will really? talk about that. So you can actually do that. Even with, if you don't have a whole bucket, you could be a person that lives in an apartment. Just get a, just get a big old you know, a bucket of, or uh, take a saucer pan, you know, a cooking pan, put your head in there. And women come back and say, doc, oh my goodness. It actually, um, it actually helps with anxiety. Now watch this. It's funny because one of my, one of my uh, uh, investigative journalists is in here. She has three daughters, okay? And she's sitting right here. When she was, now remember when I was in full-time practice, I only see a couple of females right now just because I, I love still practice that way. And I do, I do still, uh, when a parent or a person calls me and they're, they are going through things like they transgender, they, they believe they're a different sex, I will take them on just because I have experience with it. And so my other docs, but I, I, I have a heart for it that way because of the hormone problems. But when they, when they had three daughters and they're young, I said, listen, an easiest way to change your kid's state is take a glass of water and throw it in their face. Throw it in their face. It changes them right away. The water itself puts it just like you, when you go underwater, your body goes into it, tries to slow itself down in order to calm itself down. Mm -hmm. So remember, and I was a kid that dealt with major sensory neurological, immunological issues. And so that's why when I keep my face underwater, or I jump in there. There's not only a neurological component, there's a metabolic component. So therefore, ladies, you will actually cause an increase in output of your thyroid, which now which will lead to better metabolism. And do it in the morning. Do it in the morning. You have a circadian rhythm. Your hormones are supposed to jump up very high in the morning for everybody. And that gets you going. Most women are running on an empty fuel tank. They are. And it affects them both psychologically, physically, and leads to a lot of problems, both marital, relationship, and also them personally. So what, actually, I want to ask you one more food question and then I'm going to, I want to mm -hmm. ask about that. So yep. in a given day, like what is the perfect, like things that a man should eat versus a woman should eat? Yeah, they are, they are different. They really are. Okay. So like breakfast, um, what should girls eat? Should guys not eat because they should be fasting? Um, here's what happens. If you look at their circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. now here's, here's what happens. I would never generalize that advice without a lab. Let me explain why. If a person actually has extremely high cortisol in the morning on a lab, a woman has to eat because once again, if they fast in the morning, that's going to drive their cortisol up and their stress hormones to be more. And that could be a problem in general. So let's speak about the general rules. Um, both men and women can skip breakfast. The concept, um, um, the concept of breakfast and drum, you're more insulin sensitive in the morning. You can handle sugar better in the morning. There's no doubt physiologically, but that's because your, your, your body actually starts to, you know, bring its hormone levels up. It's a little more attentive to the world. But the idea is this, is when you look at somebody that has extremely tanked hormones in the morning, it's better for them, both males and females to, to fast. Um, now, women, men can fast all day. Women have to start eating by noon, you know what I'm saying? Because now, otherwise, their, their hormone system is going to be dramatically off. So if you look at it happens, look at what we need as far as repair of our body. As an athlete, okay, mm -hmm. you're going to need a lot more proteins and sugar than the average person. You do because remember, mm -hmm. you are what you eat. You have a significant amount of proteins. You have a significant amount of fat in your body. And then we have very little carbohydrates in our body. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the way we eat today, we're dominant in carbohydrates. Yeah. We're, 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 we're low in, in 
pro proteins and we're really on fat because we said, well, fat's bad for us. Well, considering that the majority of your brain is made of fat, fatty acids, mm -hmm. I kind of find that kind of contraindicated there. That's why, I, like, remember, once again, my education, if you went to undergrad, was nutrition. Mm -hmm. And here, there's a, there's a big argument about an egg. Well, an egg is an extremely, extremely, extremely bioavailable protein source and decent fat source. But I will tell you this. Here's something that's gonna, gonna throw off, and this is why people need to search out individual health, individual, individual doctrine, is I just told you that about an egg based on education, based I can prove that scientifically, I can give you every research on there, but if I eat it, it could kill me because I have an egg allergy. Uh. See, so therefore I can't have that. That's why that would be inflammatory for me. It wouldn't even hurt my hormone levels. Mm -hmm. See, that's why personalized healthcare has to be there. That's why when someone says this drug is good for everybody or this thing over the last two years they gave everybody is good for everybody, mm -hmm. and trying to make sure we don't get kicked off. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea is this, is it's so unindividualized. So if we look at what you need and think about this, mm -hmm. and here's one thing that's gonna really throw the answer off even more. Ladies, you change every week. Your diet, what you consume needs to change weekly. Mm -hmm. That's how detailed I am about building people's bodies and wow. really specific because yep. really yep it is and so i try to and, and around we have i could speak on this for hours you can go to my you know instagram page i've, I've been i'm just like you i've been kicked off a ton mm -hmm. especially during with all the stuff this way but people still seem to find me and stuff of like that but the idea is this it's that detailed now but just look at this way if you think in general i talked about this I love fiber. I love sprouts. I love organ meats. I love just uh, certain. And remember, we're talking grass-fed good meats. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear on that, I never want to eat a processed soy-fed or corn-fed cow, um, which is or wheat-fed cow that way. That's detrimental, bad meat. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what happens is this? So by putting those things on a regular basis that way, you're going to give a lot of basic building blocks. But I agree. My little girls, since they were one year old, um, have been eating organ meats since they're little. My my daughters, my four daughters, and my oldest daughter just got married. My four daughters have never seen a doctor besides me. They've had no need for it mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, so those are things that I'd say to start with and um, and really look at the details what needed for each person. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? You get tested, you, there's like a specific test you have to get? Yeah, remember, I always say this, you know, if you look at, even just look at this way, when you were playing, uh, um, you know, college ball and things like that, mm -hmm. I love your story of transferring and things like that, as, as this, is your teammate, actually needs to be tested because her needs could be different than yours and see and that's where i started to go okay listen what does each individual need mm -hmm. let's run some blood work let's run some stool work let's run some urine work there's things mm -hmm. and we can start seeing the deficiencies because here's what happens there's no person in a in the, on the planet mm -hmm. that has ever developed an illness because they were pharmaceutically deficient mm -hmm. now but there are people even in our history if you're vitamin d deficient if you're vitamin E deficient, if you're vitamin A deficient or vitamin K deficient can lead to major illnesses. Mm. See, I, I, I find it so interesting that our current form of dominant healthcare is the minute somebody is sick, mm -hmm. they never ask what it needs. If I, hey, watch this, if I had a plant right here, if I had a plant right here, um, Pearl, and it was starting to wilt, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? What's the first thing that comes to your mind about that plant? Water it. Ah, it needs water, sunlight. Maybe the cat's peeing in the soil, right. toxic, yeah. okay? But here's what happens. If you see somebody that has, has anxiety, depression, female hormone problems, the first thing that they are conditioned to run to is a doctor that's gonna give some pharmaceutical agent to manipulate their body and never ask what that person may need or what's even, like I told the example of the cat peeing in the soil or something toxic that could be wilting it. We are taught better to take care of that plant since you were little than your own female hormone body or male body. Mm -hmm. So how does this affect relationships? You said it affects how women and men behave in relationships. Yes. Okay. So let's do this. So, so if we look at just female natting, okay, the minute that a, a woman's body goes into fight or flight, it changes all tissues. Okay. Like I tell people this, mental stress can lead to progesterone and other uh, hormone deficiencies or even stress hormone excesses that once again, change them both physically and psychologically that they don't want sex. Here, think about this. Watch this. Okay. Let's take a guy. A, a guy could have a horrible day at work, which increases his testosterone. He could actually break his toe. 
he could actually, and he can come home and say, honey, guess what happened? Just a, this, this, and talk about his day and be even stressed out for it. And an hour later, he'd be like, Pearl, you want to have sex? You <laughs> saying? It's by nature. Yeah. Now, physically and mentally, what happens to a woman's biochemistry? It even changes the vaginal secretions of a woman when they're stressed out. It even changes their brain and their desire when they are in fight or flight is dramatically different. That's why when a woman's stressed out, they're basically their panties are super glued to them, mm -hmm. okay? Because by nature, that stress actually pulls out that desire of connection. See, estrogens are very a connective hormone. Mm -hmm. And see, when they're under stress, they lose that ability to connect by nature. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Duran, guys, I can teach you this. I do this all the time. Do you understand? Here, Pearl, let me see a question. Mm -hmm. Let's go with this. Who do you think stresses out more, men or women in general? Who do you think stresses out more, men or women? Women. Who causes the women all stress? Men. <laughs> okay. Now, here it happens. Now, the reason why, and see, everybody laughs when I say that, and then women go, hey, that's kind of right. But here's what happens. Guys, what if I told you that you could be one of the greatest stress relievers and health things to your woman and your wife mm -hmm. if you knew how to do it right, if you understood her hormones? Okay. Because by nature, she's connected to everything. Guys can be so laser focused, they can leave the house and they can realize that they don't even have kids or, or, or a wife. Because we're what? They're lazy folks. They dominate. Right, it's good. Right. Yeah. It's good. Mm -hmm. But here's what happens. Women can't do that. They're connected to everything. Mm -hmm. So a guy has, if, if a guy wants to be in a relationship, that wife may have a stressful day. They may have something going on. What if I told you, told you that there's things that you can do that can bring her stress levels down and bring her estrogens and bring her hormone levels up that she can be connected Mm -hmm. And see, it's not that difficult. It really isn't. It's just that guys are not taught this stuff. And women are, once again, they're not taught how stress is so bad for them. Because when they go into fight or flight, when they start releasing cortisol and all the major stress hormones and adrenaline, guess what happens? It steals away from their biology to actually go into a, a, a state of fertility, connection. And that's why it's very difficult for them to actually, when they're under high levels of stress. So I say, guys, it's your job to be the protector and create the environment that leaves a woman in the least level of stress because by nature, one of the major aspects of us being with a woman is sex. Mm -hmm. So don't be the stressor. You're working against the stuff that you ever want. Mm -hmm. Vice versa. Ladies, don't put yourself in major stressful situations from other females and other situations that can lead to major stressful things, including how you take care of your body because by nature, the reason why a man is with you in the first place is sex is one of those things. Oh, uh, So that's why sometimes I feel like guys will try to keep you out of certain situations so you don't get stressed out. Supposed to. That's yeah. actually the, if, if you understood, and here's as a doctor, mm -hmm. and guys, listen, I just started to understand the biology of hormones and trying to, trying to get my wife from being infertile to fertile, and obviously, and I've done that now. That's why I did my whole career after I figured all this stuff out. But here's what happened to this. But then I realized that by nature, that guess what happens? And this is biology. We are protectors. And when you protect your wife, yes, if you protect your wife from the world, from, mm -hmm. from all the bad things that they're not supposed to deal with, you essentially bring her into her female characteristics that you love. I watch on your show mm -hmm. that men say, man, I just want a feminine woman. Then be the protector that allows her to be in that feminist situation and don't put her in the stresses. And sometimes we as men, and this is where the feminists go crazy, mm -hmm. we need to even protect you from your friends and other environments mm -hmm. because we understand that if you get stressed out, we actually are the non-beneficiaries of you being stressed right. out because you're all stressed out. We ain't getting sex at night. <laughs> Well, and then every, it's like when a girl's stressed out, we don't hide it well. It's like the whole family feels it. Yeah, but, you, but here's what happens this. You know, if you think this way, a man's supposed to be the mountain of the emotional waves that crash into you. It's okay. Mm -hmm. See, this idea, this idea that men are not supposed to have handle problems doesn't make any biological sense to me. Because here, by nature, like no joke, on your show tonight or on your show next show that way, mm -hmm. if you were to, if you're, if you're, if you're guards, if you're security, was to even remove one of those men, okay? Just by nature, guess what happens? His testosterone goes up because when we go to fight or flight, here comes our hormones. And that's why if you notice, a guy is really aggressive, he's turned on, he's turned on. Mm -hmm. See, it does the totally opposite to women, totally opposite to women. Mm -hmm. And if guys understood, so, so when you always ask the question, 
what don't men and women understand about each other? They don't understand each other's hormones, so they don't know how to treat them. Here, watch this. You say, Doc, but you even said that a, a guy can leave and he can basically go conquer day because competition and all those major characteristics, but I want him to think about me a little bit. Well, then guess what happens? If you stimulate his testosterone to focus on you, he can go dominate the world, but he'll think about you and only you all day long. You know, watch this. If um, ladies, little trick, and they're going to say, Doc, don't do it because my husband may watch this right now. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Tomorrow morning, do this, to your, do this to, your, to your man, okay? Just go up before he leaves. He's going to go conquer the day. Be his biggest support. Honey, go dominate. Go be you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Someone gets in your way, go do it. You, you handle that. You handle your business. And then before he leaves, just whisper into his ear. And remember, honey, tonight is going to be a good night. <laughs> what does that man think about all day long? You follow me? He will probably text you more than he's ever texted you before. Because what you did, you because here's what happens. Men by nature produce testosterone by thought, sight, and some aggression. And therefore, you just stimulate to think about testosterone because testosterone is a very laser-focused thing. And he will think about this all day long. And guess what happens? And if he understands the biology of you, he will come home and set the environment of no stress. So that by the time that the kids go bed, or by the time that's nighttime that way, that guess what happens? It's good. It's a good night. What do you think about like women liking toxic men? Like um, men, men like having to do like I, I hear this like men do, you know, um, sporadic or like um, toxic behaviors, but it's because like women like it. What's well, your, you got to remember there a this professional when, diagnosis to this. <laughs> Well, here I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about biology and let's go over this and it'll make complete sense. Okay. And you're gonna say wow when I'm you're gonna say wow when I'm done with this. Okay. Okay. The the females who for for example love toxic men mm -hmm. are the women who actually don't get to experience the true femininity and the true hormonal rush of a feminine woman. Let me explain. Because estrogens by nature put women into a very connective, uh, wonderful response that gives them their sex drive. But now if they have to act masculine because they've been through trauma and other things, their rush of hormones of testosterone comes from fighting in aggression and that will stimulate them, which will give them a sex drive towards that person, just like a male. See, so therefore the sad part is this, if a woman has to live, and, and, and I mean this very nicely, mm -hmm. I mean this very nicely and I don't wanna talk about race, but if you look, without a father in the household, and this does happen a lot in African-American communities, mm -hmm. okay? The women have to take on male characteristics in order to sort of survive. Mm -hmm. they, have to, they have to supply, they have to, they have to handle the stress. Mm -hmm. So therefore, their whole life is based around getting that shot of testosterone that gives them their emotion like it does to a man. So now if they're now put into a feminist situation because they come into a guy that say, listen, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to support you that way. And that, but their whole biology has been triggered for, by emotions to look for that rush, that anger, that, 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 that thing that can drive their testosterone levels up and a good protective, a good male isn't as appealing to them. Mm -hmm. You know saying? Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that. I'm going to say, and, and people go, holy crap. I've talked to psychiatrists going, holy crap, doc. You just answered the reason why women look for that stimulant. A toxic man is a stimulant that gives them the biological rush that they had to deal with their whole life that gave them some form of satisfaction biologically. And holy psychiatrists are going, doc, you freaking knocked out of the park with that one right there. You... I said, yes. So you have to get women into more of a feminine, understanding that state mm -hmm. and, and, and seeing that their body can and mentally and physically can be better in that feminine state than it ever can be in an aggressive state. What do you what do you think of because I've heard another explanation for it that it's because like um, men that display certain toxic characteristics, um, it's also means they can protect us. So if like a guy, but that's not toxic. Mm -hmm. See, see, if you look at all the characteristics of a man, that's not toxic. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's femininity looking for masculinity. Mm. Yeah. But I just, meant, I just meant like, okay, for example, um, violent offenders, like prison offenders <laughs> reproduce, yeah. reproduce more than like the average job. Yeah. So that like, I think we'd agree that a, a violent, a person that's committing violent crimes, like that's, that's toxic. It's not a good. Well, here's that. Yeah, right. Okay. Here, let's go back to this. 
if you look at look at all the traits of masculinity, right. uncontrolled, uncontrolled or violent. Right, right. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. See what happens to this. Competitiveness, and let's give you a really stupid example, but this does happen. Let's say you're competitive in business and one of your competitors is beating you. Mm -hmm. There has been physical crimes and murder against people like that. Mm -hmm. Once again, they took a, they took a masculine comp competition state way too far. So, so what happens is this. That's why if you ever look at the fact that, you know, a person that may have committed a crime, what happens is they were uncontrolled. Now, I believe this. See, if you think of it this way, is every guy has a major monster inside of them. Mm -hmm. But what happens is because a good man will teach another good man, say, listen, and that's what, we, that's what happens. This drives me nuts. It's really interesting how women would be extremely disgusted if they actually knew what we thought about all day long. You say, <laughs> because you know why? Because once again, and women always say they want the truth. I'm like, no, you do not. You do not mm. want the truth. That's why men have to talk to men about this stuff. Right. Because guess what happens? You'll stress out your woman if you actually, if you told them what went through your head every single day. But see, a controlled man, be that monster, but control it. And that's what we're not teaching men. Mm -hmm. Because we're teaching them that their sexual desire, get this, my daughter just got married. I looked at my I looked at my son-in-law who is a who is a is a uh, twenty eight year old stud, okay. Mm -hmm. And my daughter is absolutely gorgeous. I said, listen, you're gonna look at her and you're gonna touch her boobs and grab her butt every single day right now. If you touch her, I'll kill you. When you're married, have sex, your eyes pop out. Mm -hmm. You saying? And when they got married, I'm like I'm like hey, when they got married, I was sitting with my son-in-law. I said, dude, we're on a golf course. I said, guess what? You used up all your testosterone sex last night. Guess what? Your drives are not gonna go as far as mine today. You say, and we're on the golf course. So it's kind of funny. And what I'm just kind of showing this is that masculine trait, once again, just had to be controlled. See, we don't teach that anymore. You say, we don't sit there and goes, hey, young men, guess what happens? You're going to go through all these things. Control them. They don't go away. Ask any of your good men on a show. Those drives never go away. They're just controlled. So therefore, that's a very appealing. So that's why I just got out of prison. Okay, what do they do? They have the same masculine Traits that are uncontrolled. So stop calling, stop calling masculine traits toxic. Mm -hmm. You start to call toxic people uncontrolled. Oh, and they have I see. Emails. So it's more un, like it's uncontrolled. It's not toxic. Well, watch this. Watch this. Here's what happens. I I will tell you this. I had a family member that was in prison. Mm -hmm. Okay. I went and visited him on a regular basis. I sat there with the moms. So compassionate, nurturing. If it's uncontrolled, they're like, my, my boy's such a good boy. He's sitting in prison. He's sitting in prison. So your uncontrolled femininity is being too compassionate. Knock it off. That's why there has to be a balance of it. Is that why? Like, uh, you know, it's weird. A lot of times when I talk to guys from single mother homes, I can hear it in their voice. And I don't know what yes. it is. And it's also a thing I can hear in like female athletes, like voices and the way we carry ourselves. Like I, I know because a lot of us are daddy's girls. I've just noticed a lot of us are the oldest girls and we're daddy's girls. And <laughs> where I've noticed like with men from single mother homes, like I can hear it in their voice and the way they like talk, like they just speak in a more feminine way. Well, here, look at my daughters. Mm -hmm. Guess what happens? I'm still their hero. Mm -hmm. Daddies are supposed to be that way. Daddies are supposed to, show the masculine traits, not only to the society to go out and dominate, but also to get, remember, a, a masculine man can go dominate and take on competition, competence, laser focus, decisiveness, and then come home and once again, and be a very good family man. And the daughters see that. And do you think that my oldest daughter didn't actually go after a man like that? Of course, it. my son-in-law is just right, like me. Because they my son-in-law, for example, mm -hmm. is a doc just as they, and, and guess what happens? And people say, I set the standard. Uh-uh. What I did is show my daughter what a masculine provider, protector, and things like that. And my daughter actually is going to be a doctor just like me. But I even told my son-in-law, you are there to protect her from stress, even sometimes from herself. So I'm teaching my son-in-law, you need to protect her from sometimes herself. Because if she stressed herself out, she can very, be very driven. And she was an athlete. Mm -hmm. She was a great athlete, mm -hmm. top state golfer, amazing, all the good things like that. She still loves athletics that way, but she also knows how to take care of her body so she doesn't miss her cycle. She doesn't skip her period. She doesn't have any psychiatric issues. Right. She's very feminine.
But that's what these guys, and so I figured all this out by just understanding the biology, the, the testosterone, the estrogens, the things of women, how they affect both men and women physically and psychologically. And that's why it's like, and I will be honest, I reached out to you. I'll tell you, I, was, I would tell the crowd how I met Pearl. Yeah. <laughs> she mentioned that she was having some health things. Mm -hmm. Well, as a male protective, I'm like, Pearl, you're doing wonderful things. I sometimes have to protect you from yourself so you continue to do the great things in the world. So my advice to you, Pearl, has always been things to protect you. And do you fight me on them? Do you fight me on them, Pearl? Be honest. Okay, I don't yeah. fight you. I just don't know how to like... <laughs> I just am so See, but, unsuccessful at it. <laughs> but here, but as a protector, as yeah. a doctor to you, mm -hmm. I have to give you advice even if you don't like it or not. Mm -hmm. See, that's what we do as, and so I've taken that transition into being a doctor, into being a father, into being a leader of a huge company mm -hmm. that's growing all over the world. And guys, listen, I started with $500. I employ more women than men. Mm -hmm. And I sit there and tell them, ladies, you are not allowed to stress out my company because it'll make you sick. Mm -hmm. It'll make you sick. I don't want you sick. I want you to thrive in your characteristics. I wanted you to bring to a feminine quality to certain aspects of the company. Why the males dominate and do their do their athletic aspects, the competition, because that business is kind of your dad, guess what happens? He still has to compete being a business owner. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is you marry, you bring the two together, mm -hmm. just like in a marriage, you bring the two together in a relationship, bring the two together in healthcare, and it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. What? So what? I gotta quit. I gotta quit sugar. That's like the big one. Uh, knowing, I will say this because mm -hmm. everything's private. Yeah. But knowing your labs, yes, you do. <laughs> I, God, I, want sugar. I always no, I quit. Know. I always do it for like two days and then I quit. It's not good. It's not. But. But when you do that, your two days, your body says, thank you, Dr. Patrick, for giving me that <laughs> advice. <laughs> maybe I'm inspired after this. I'll do, maybe I'll make it to three days this time. <laughs> okay. Hey, I will take it. I'll take it. Um, okay. What are we talking? Toxins, trauma. Uh, what's your most controversial opinion? Um, my most controversial opinion. Actually, this is this is this got me kicked off of media a little bit that way. Is I'm gonna say it dramatically, but I'm gonna explain it physically. And we talked about it. Okay. Women are not mental meant to handle stress. Okay. Now let me explain. I'm not saying, for example, that they that and what I mean by that is this: is whenever stress gets to a biological shift to where their body goes into fight or flight and they start producing stress hormones that take away from their anabolic buildup, repair, uh, calming feminine hormones, you now are putting that, that woman into an adaptive state that can lead to illness, both psychological and physical. And I just can't, I can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't not talk about that because here's what happens. Do you understand that right now, more women take psychiatric medication ever in history? Do you know right now that women are more unhappy, more infertile, more obese, have more diseases ever in history, yet the thinking perpetuates and they're trying to do it more that they're putting women in stressful situations that lead to physical and psychological ramifications that can be avoided if they just understand that. See, people say, doc, but there's some people that can't avoid stress, but here's one thing that they do though. See, and they think when I say that, that I'm not saying that, that I'm saying women are weak, that's totally opposite. I'm actually telling you that women are strong because if you can let them know that stress can hurt them, mm -hmm. they will be more because women are more intuitive. Women are more perceptive of their surroundings. They will start to avoid those stressful things. They'll start to, they'll start to know that when their body moves into a stressful state, that it can only be there for a short time and they'll make changes very quickly where a man won't. Mm. Okay. So therefore bringing awareness to women, and using their strength and allowing them to be deductive and, and with the world, they have now better perception of what to do and they can use that being strong. Because here's what happens. Pearl, you may have to sometimes look at this and go, mm -hmm. something that's stressful in your life and you have to realize that now that you know it can hurt you, mm -hmm. you can say, no soy latte, I'm gonna push it away because that's a toxin. Mm -hmm. You can say, no, I'm not gonna work out every single day because the way, now remember, 
you have to move every day, but you're not going to work on intensely every single day. You push that way. Mm -hmm. But maybe you might do this, Pearl. You may say, no bad relative, bad friend, bad boy, bad anything in my life that's causing me mental stress. Mm -hmm. And now that you are aware, it makes you strong because now you can say the most important word that every woman needed to know. And it was the best doctoring advice I ever gave to woman mm -hmm. and I, to, to women in general is you have to learn to say no. Yeah. yeah. So the one thing that I struggle with is freaking, I feel like the last like month I've had so much like, I don't know, people dissecting every part of my life online. And it's just been like crazy. No, like seriously. And my producer was Pearl, what? Pearl, I've been going against the grain for 24 years. Let me tell you a little story. And this is why, this is honestly and totally being transparent with you, mm -hmm. why I reached out to you, because here's what happens. Mm -hmm. When I proposed to my wife, all these ideas that I was sharing 24, maybe even longer than that, 24 years ago, I knew I was gonna go against the grain. Mm -hmm. I knew it. So I looked at her and before, and I, and I got down one knee and I said, listen, being married to me will be the most difficult thing you ever do in your life because I'm gonna share ideas that are gonna to go totally opposite to what the world is telling everybody, but the world's not going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I believe God gave me the strength and the ideas to bring them to you. And so therefore it's going to be very difficult. So I said, if you wanna take this journey with me, marry me. Mm -hmm. If you don't, I understand. Pearl, with your show, you're going against the grain. Mm -hmm. And because they can't argue your message, mm -hmm. They have to attack the messenger. Mm -hmm. The people are going to attack me right now because I'm talking about female hormones. I'm not an endocrinologist, but endocrinologists have led people down this bad path. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Other, other medical people have led people down the wrong path. So when you cannot argue the message, you have to argue the messenger. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you and I want to protect you from that thinking that mm -hmm. when people are critical and tearing you apart, mm -hmm. that means, guess what? Your information is affecting them. They don't want to sit down and have to really sit down and go, maybe I have to change my thinking. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tear on the tall six foot girl that's not married and talks to guys and, and is this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. I see the criticism. Mm -hmm. And when I see it, mm -hmm. I smile. Mm -hmm. So it's people like me that have a huge platform on this side that mm -hmm. I can't wait to share the video. So when they watch your stuff, mm -hmm. that they are going to be more encouraging to you. Mm -hmm. So that's the good part, which would be better for you. No, but I just, I haven't found a good way to like, I, I've gotten better, but this like last like month has been my first like media storm. You know what I mean? Where it's just been like nuts. And it's like, I just have not found a good way to deal with like the stress because they start to like go after your family. They start to like, it, it just, yeah. it just gets crazy. Yes, and I'm like, I, I don't there. know. It's hard because I'm like, I'm I don't gonna do this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> to, cal to, calm your, to calm your brain down, mm -hmm. calm your brain down, I want you to take some California poppy and some chamomile. And everybody's going to research that now, and they're going to see the calming neurological and immunological and psychological effects. If you look at like chamomile, it has a, has a little ingredient in there called apigen, A-P-I-G-E-N-I-N. And it actually slow, it actually will help the front brain even calm down your thoughts a little bit mm -hmm. and stuff. And See, I'd rather have you things like that than some psychiatric medication to try to numb you. Yeah. No, well, I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> but because yeah. the other thing I was going to ask is like, um, yeah, I feel like we're all so addicted to our phones now. And well, question for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to change this. OK, mm -hmm. here's what happens. Um, if you look at it this way, everything is about awareness. Mm -hmm. OK. And right now, the easiest way to even find you mm -hmm. find other people is the phone yeah what the only thing i do want you to do so i look at this remember people are going to try to take anything and make it bad whatever people didn't grow up with they they say it's bad mm -hmm. gotta remember if you did and when the tv came out um guess what happens everybody said it was satan it was gonna destroy people's lives when it came out guess what happens whatever you, you remember this whatever you didn't have as a child you think is bad right okay and now but here's what happens there is there's one thing i would like people to do is about an hour before bed they need to put their phone down just from the aspect of melatonin production. Okay. So I, I want you to, you know, if you, if you notice, if you ever see some of my videos, I will have certain blockers on certain glasses that just block certain light, certain blue light. 
and everything. So there's not a stimulatory effect because once again, melatonin, which helps us go to sleep, mm -hmm. once again, actually starts to cycle up towards that 9 p.m. mark. And so when you do have that electronic around the area, mm -hmm. you actually stimulate and you won't get that production. But I don't see anything, I don't see anything wrong with the phone because guess what happens? Before a long time ago, instead of the phone, it was the radio. Or before the radio was the newspaper. Before right. the uh, before no. you know uh, internet there was TV. I just feel like it's good because like I've built such a, a cool like show off of it. But sometimes I'm like I feel like it controls me more than I control it, and I think it's like part of the reason I don't sleep as much as I should, and I'm up so late. At, well, I mean, partially it's the show, which I just moved another hour earlier because of good. Thank me. you. I just yes. Now we're almost. I'm surprised. I'm surprised you didn't ask me that. I'm surprised you didn't ask me about sleep because women need more sleep. I did a video that yeah. went absolutely viral that I had scientists call me from all over the world to explain mm -hmm. what I meant by it. And they were and they were blown away when I gave the explanation. But women need more sleep than, than men because it's all hormonal. It's based on a circadian rhythm. It's based on hormonal levels and even buildup of growth hormone Horrible. and ladies. And I do this myself, mm -hmm. but you need to be in bed for the best hormone production between the times of 9 and 10 p.m. And the later that you go to bed, the less hormone reserves, the less growth hormone, the less everything you do have. And that's why, get this, I own a large company, and I've said this, and this mm -hmm. drives feminists nuts. But being a protector of everybody, of mm -hmm. all women, see, I'm a protector of women. Mm -hmm. So if when my company has to be open on third shift, mm -hmm. I will make a rule, and maybe this will get me canceled, mm -hmm. but I will make a rule that they cannot hire women for third shift because what I see is a detriment to their life and their health, mm -hmm. and it will be a bad situation for them both physically and mentally, and I'm not going to contribute to them being sick. I'd rather put men on third shift mm -hmm. than I would think. Now, I don't think I'll ever do third shift because I think men and women both need to um, both need to mm -hmm. um sleep so i probably on my own values and understanding i will probably never keep my uh, warehouse open through third shift because mm -hmm. i can't i believe too much in what i what i know mm -hmm. so when high school i learned about like a sleep debt is that a real thing um explain what so you in that. high Define school that. i remember i was in psychology class and they said like so if you if you need eight hours of sleep a night and you only get six like then you accure a sleep debt so it's like you need like four like well you, and they said it's like weird though because they, they said you couldn't make it up but then you do sleep more later but it's not like the same type of sleep like uh, it, that that's 100 right you don't you you that's not cumulative it just here's what happens is we just even talk about it. what they're what they're trying to tell you is this is if you get to bed at midnight mm -hmm. and even sleep till eight o'clock and got eight hours you are still gonna be more hormonally deficient than the person that went to bed at, that that uh, at nine and slept till oh. five, because so here's what happens: this. So and then when it happens is you become so hormonally fatigued and you actually have deficiency hormones that your body just gives out and you sleep a bunch, but you still don't feel the greatest. Oh. See, you need to and think about the circadian rhythm of when our hormones speak up and when they come down, and then look at when we start to build up our reserves. Well, guess what happens? Guys don't need the amount of reserves as women. And they need less sleep. Mm -hmm. And all I did was say, here's why women need more sleep. Here's the, the scientific basis behind it. And, and I got like 100 million views and stuff like that. And, um, wow. and I had obviously, once again, Pearl, I had, because, because uh, I had people that were, women are screaming at me about third shift. I had people this. I, I said, listen, I'm just putting out information for people to digest and take. And it's great. And because they couldn't mm -hmm. argue the message, they had to yell at the what? The, the messenger. messenger. Right. So I'm going to continue to encourage to put your message out there. Mm -hmm. And then what a man would should do, the man in your life mm -hmm. should say, Pearl, I'm going to protect you and you're not going to read the comments. Mm -hmm. I'll read the comments and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because yes, as you guys are connective, you see, nice thing about a guy, mm -hmm. because of testosterone, guess what happens? Mm -hmm. Every man, now let me talk about this for mm -hmm. two seconds on here. Mm -hmm. Every man, because of testosterone, testosterone gives us great confidence. Do me a favor, mm -hmm. in your studio tonight, look at the men. And every man, regardless of his age, because of testosterone, thinks he's amazing. Mm -hmm. Testosterone is a very confident hormone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm So that's why if you ever look at a man and, uh, and, and, and they seem so confident, they're flexing, our society downrigs that. I mean, no, 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 that's his biology. Second of all, women don't have the testosterone levels. Mm -hmm. So they don't have the confidence. They have estrogens that are more connecting. Mm -hmm. So I know you, Pearl. 
Yeah, and, and I said, we haven't had this kind of discussion, but I know you on this. Just by being a woman, mm -hmm. you, uh, you know you're putting out good stuff. And you know that if it's taken seriously, it's going to make people's lives better. Mm -hmm. So you want it to connect to everybody. Mm -hmm. So you, you will look at that one bad comment mm -hmm. compared to the 10 amazing ones. Mm -hmm. And because that's by new nature of a woman. Mm -hmm. Now here's what happens. And that's why here's what happens. One of the easiest ways, guys, and look at me in the camera right now. Mm -hmm. One of the easiest ways to win a woman's heart over and connect with her is to look her in the eyes and say, honey, I choose you. See, because that's so connecting, builds their hormones, gives them confidence, does all those great things. Mm -hmm. See, if you look at a man and you look at a man and Pearl and you say that kind of language to him, because remember, men and women can't speak to each other the same. Mm -hmm. And you look at a man and say, honey, I choose you. He looks at you and says, no kidding, I'm amazing. I choose me too. <laughs> you say it? But see, here's what happens to this. Right. Because that's not stimulatory hormones that way. Mm -hmm. So, so what I want you to do is when you look at those comments, mm -hmm. when you look at those things, just understand your message, look at the broader aspect. Mm -hmm. Your message is connecting to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But you know, some of this, I, I mean this sincerely. By nature, I don't like everybody I meet. That means everybody's not going to like me. Right. So therefore, keep doing your work, keep those things. But see, mm -hmm. I'm giving you this advice based knowing that you're a female mm -hmm. and having hormones and the advice to males knowing their hormones. And we have to stop thinking that we're equal because mm -hmm. equal even by definition means that we're the same and we can't speak to a man and speak to a woman. Mm -hmm. I can't speak to my female employees the same way I speak to my male employees. It actually does not work. It doesn't motivate them the same way. It doesn't get them the same way. And you're actually going to end up with a very unhappy employees. Yeah. the That's actually true with, um, even in sports, like I'll think I'll see like my coaches coach our team and the men's team and they coach them completely different. You have to. You have to see that Mary told you the only acceptable way to be a man today is in sports. In yeah. sports. See, because if you bring that to the real world, you bring that to the home, you bring that to relationships, they're like, oh, toxic. That's really? Those masculine traits are what you're going like this during the football game. Woo! Do you say? Yeah. And it's like, but then, you know, I'll give you an example because you're from Chicago. I'm from Green Bay. Mm -hmm. Remember when Aaron Rodgers did this? He did the double check. What was it? Double, was it? Discount double check. And he said to Chicago, I own you. Every female and male were going, woo! <laughs> and every Chicago person was going, you arrogant piece of crap. But if that would happen reverse based on the team you're rooting for, mm -hmm. to get my point? Mm -hmm. But see, that masculine trait was awarded when you, they're on your team. But when you're not on a team, look as toxic. He's arrogant. He's just owned Chicago his whole career. He just said what was true. Yeah. So. <laughs> no. I don't, anyway, so it's the same thing. I don't even watch sports. So I don't. I, I don't remember. Neither do I. That. No. <laughs> but wait. So with uh, this... no, I don't watch sports. I really don't. So what? Okay. So I have a question. Why does circadian rhythm matter? Because like when I think of different time zones, it's like different, isn't it? Do you know what Pearl, I mean? Like, like remember, my... remember, okay, remember when we were talking in Hawaii and I was five hours behind? Mm -hmm. See, here's what happens this. Now think about this, okay? The circadian rhythm actually is biological. It's based on, no joke, it's based on, you know, just rotation of the earth, sun, everything like that. And, and this is basic science, okay? So when you travel back and forth, here's what happens. You need to support your circadian rhythm and your body will adapt to the time zone and your body will adapt to nature. Do you know one of the easiest ways to help your circadian rhythm change? The minute the sun comes up, no matter where you are, take your shoes off, go ground on the earth because electrons are sitting there waiting for you, which actually changes your biology. You look at the sun, it reduces your melatonin and other hormones, and you start to adapt to the circadian rhythm of when the sun comes up and the sun goes down. Okay. It's, basic, it's basic biology. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a so when I'm flying... Good. Said so I'm in a pet house in the middle of London. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, guess what? Here. Just walk outside, get outside, go to the park, kick off your shoes. Sun comes up. Look at the sun. Mm -hmm. Literally look at the sun. It changes your biology. It really does. That's that. Every neuroscience will tell you it changes and gets. It brings down your sleep hormones, and I'm talking in general, and brings up your excitatory hormones to get you going through the day. And so you. So remember, I travel. I travel a lot, Pearl. I have offices all over the world. I travel a lot. I speak. I ask to go, go over there. I'm going to come over and come to your studio one day. Guess what happens? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have, but I will, but you'll see. And then you can even support it nutritionally. Mm -hmm. I will take some form, like you talk about, of some of those herbs that will actually help me sleep at a certain time and help me get up that way. Just help me adapt. But then I don't need them once I'm adapted. 
I actually, I have another question, and maybe you could hormonally Absolutely. explain this. I've always felt, like, different from other people because I can just, like, go, go, and, like, women especially, like, because I can just, like, go, 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 like, so yep. much more than other, which doesn't make sense because I, I'm not, I'm, it's definitely not my nutrition, right? But yep. I, I, like, because my nutrition's bad, I know it's bad, you know what I mean? So, so it's, like, I, I feel like, like my whole life, like people like don't understand how I can like do so much at the same time, but I like I don't know why. Does that make sense? Absolutely, I hundred percent know why. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Okay. Now think about this. As an athlete, mm-hmm. you have trained your body. Even if your hormone levels drop, you trained your body to force your body to push out other hormones that come from your adrenals because once again, those help you deal with the stressful response. Mm-hmm. And as an athlete. You've done this. You've had to push yourself. You felt that adrenaline rush. You didn't realize there's cortisol and other hormones that are coming out that way. So you've kind of mentally and physically conditioned your body to live that way. Mm-hmm. Here's the bad part. Right. Here's the bad part. You're 26. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You are going to eventually tank yourself out, and then you're you're going to go from an extreme to I could go go all the time to I can't get out of bed. I see it happen all the time. Really? Now, if you to if you learn to support your body. Mm-hmm. And do those things, you'll be just fine. And that's now, like once the, again, that's the nutrition as I part. Told you, yeah, it's, it's no, nutrition. Take some medicinal that's herbs. A, that's do some the things thing. right. Like I've felt it this like past year or two. Like I've just felt it slowing me down, and I'm like, what is this? I'm like, I and I still think I'm better than like most people, but it's not what. Like I, I can feel it, and I was I like, oh, "Shit, this stuff's catching up to me." And the other thing is, it is. I feel like relaxing is really hard for me, and I don't know why. I'm like. I, it's like whenever well, I'm like, I do. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah. Gotta remember. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to the same situation. You've, you've heard the term, you're an adrenaline junkie. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, what I mean by that is this is you have been so used to stimulation from sports, from stuff, what you do for as a career, your body's going to keep on putting out those hormones. It does. But those hormones, once again, adrenaline, epinephrine, norepinephrine, mm-hmm. are, once again, they keep you on edge. They keep you on edge. They're meant to make your brain go like crazy. So they're wrong. If you were, like I said, I've given you some simple health advice to help you. Mm-hmm. But if you were actually a true patient, I would actually give you some things like at seven o'clock at night and give you an example, even start with a little chamomile. Just start drinking some chamomile tea at seven o'clock at night. Okay. You say, doc, but wait, it's actually going to make me not ready for our show. Actually, believe it or not, it's going to put you in a very focal state that actually you'll do even better with your questions and stuff on your show. Okay. Because sometimes you do this. What is it called? Chamomile. Just chamomile tea. Chamomile, C H A M O M I L E. Just chamomile tea. Just start there. Don't have to do the medicinal herb. Don't have to even spend the money on it. Get some good chamomile tea. Start doing that mm-hmm. and stuff of that. And what I do, and what I'm going to do, and like I said, I'm just going to show you the constituents that you can consume mm-hmm. that aren't pharmaceutical because you're not pharmaceutically deficient with what you're going through, mm-hmm. but you are nutrition and other certain deficiencies, the world deficiencies that don't allow your brain to settle down. Mm-hmm. But then once again. You can't keep running on fight or flight for excessive periods of time Mm -hmm. without having some physical or mental consequence. And I'm trying to protect women, even you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to protect you by actually making sure we don't get to that point because you have a message that needs to continue to spread. Mm -hmm. And once, and ladies, you know this, once you get sick, you're not a good mom, you're not a good wife, Mm -hmm. you're not a good worker, not all these things. But if you know how to take care of your body, you can continue to form everything you do. It's just that we have no form of healthcare system with the exception of what I do and some of that and we've done that actually can not only support men and women biologically, but also keep them going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I went to this like herbal doctor or something. I mean, I, I think he's similar to what you do, but a little different. And he was just saying, you're some of the worst test results I've ever seen on a 26 year old. I was like, what? No, but I work out all the time. <laughs> well, but I've seen your test results. Mm-hmm. They're not the worst, but they're not normal either. There are some problems right. there and some of that. But once again, mm-hmm. can be dealt with so well right now. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm trying to tell, you know, that's why I get very, I get very frustrated when I hear the say, oh, my daughter has PMS. Guys, that that is it might be common, but it's not normal. It's not called premenstrual P- normal. What do you mean daughter's PMS? Like like she's moody so because there, she got her period. Well, no. If you look at if you look at the symptomatology of PMS, there could be changes in blood flow during her cycle. Mm-hmm. There could be mood changes. There could be cramping. There can be bloating. There can be discomfort. There can be you know pain within the uterus or ovaries and things like that. 
And that's called, you know, that's why it's a very common thing why women are put on, young ladies are put on birth control, which is called an endocrine disruptor. It's classified as an endocrine disruptor. Mm -hmm. But the idea is this, is those are issues that already show imbalances that need to be addressed. But because there is, well, like I said, because our current form of healthcare system is just going to manipulate your hormones uh, and endocrine disrupt and do all bad things, it's really sad. So, and remember, we talked about, I was very proud of you the other day, because remember we were talking about birth control and then you did a show on birth control. Yeah. It's like, because birth control changes the hormones which now change how women view the world and how they even view guys and that's been so well documented on that yeah well i just remember being 16 and like all my friends were getting on it and i just remember thinking this can't be good like i i don't because i always wanted a lot of kids and i was thinking it just doesn't seem like that would be good to have a lot of kids to <laughs> to shut yep. off your kids making stuff yeah, and, and how it does it is, once again, it manipulates, inhibits the brain and other hormonal things. Man, I just, that scares the heck out of me. It does. And remember, and people say, well, Doc, but my daughter is suffering, so they put her on it. Well, once again, she's not suffering because she's on a birth control deficiency syndrome. Mm -hmm. Now, see, I make up terms like that because it's like it doesn't even sound right. No, there's other deficiencies and other things that are going on to help, help her normalize that. And on top of it, you need to find the stressors that led to some of those things in the first place. So that's why it's very easy for, for us to walk through with women on these things. But what did it gave me a very global aspect of like masculinity, femininity, right. all the things and if they cross what can happen. And that's how, once again, that's how the first transgender person came into me probably 15 years ago mm -hmm. and just had some questions. And, and I just asked some questions back. I asked one simple question to him. I said, do you have hormone testing done and he said no and i said as a doc may i test that and he said yes and his estrogens were Super. elevated on him and did it did it fix it like when you fixed his estrogen levels and did he still want to be a, a she or whatever so so here's what happened now here's so here's what's going to happen and i'm going to set this stage and i was waiting for you to ask me this you have just like right now no one has ever experienced what you did as far as being attacked like you have. Mm -hmm. You've been attacked by some of us has, and we can relate, we can empathize. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no one can take away my experiences as a, as a clinician. Nobody can. Mm -hmm. No one can take away just because I have a different background, just because I just because I, you know, went to undergrads for different degrees and went to coverage school, went to other school in that way, my postgraduate work, all some of that. No one can take my clinical experience away from me. So the reason why I set that up is this. I have dealt with a significant amount of people, and I will just underestimate, about a, a little over 100 people that dealt with transgender for the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, now, once again, clinically, here's what happened. The people I took care of, I wasn't trying to focus on their beliefs and what they were. I was focusing on the hormone levels that could change them both physically and psychologically. Mm -hmm. And I have been very blessed to tell you that when we start to normalize them, all of them start to shift back to the normal thought process, even to the point where parents came into me and said, they now want to be called by their correct gender name mm. and stuff. And no one could take that away from me because you know why I have data on it. I actually had labs done on them. I had post labs with them getting better. And so my whole thing was my job isn't to judge what you believe or what you're going through. It's my job as a doctor to get your body back to normal. And the consequence of me getting back to normal is they had psychological and physiological change, which would you and I would say being a normal female and normal male was. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, in the world of, so I don't look at it as like, I'm trying to fix them from being transgender. That was never my objective. My objective was these people are, have certain hormonal imbalances that can lead them that how they perceive the world, how they perceive themselves, what can end up, and that's why if you ever look, if you ever look at, stop just looking at the psychological aspect. These people also have physical things that are going on with them, but they don't want to talk about them even though they're directly related. So I've had, as, as people would say, success at helping them get their things back to normal, and then their psychological aspect went back to normal. Well, and it's crazy because a lot of parents will just like start them on hormones and stuff, and I, I think that's so irresponsible. Well, you know why it's irresponsible? So I'm getting interviewed on a, on a national show tomorrow mm -hmm. because if I were to just give you this, and so anybody that disagrees with me, I'm going to give you just a simple scientific thing. Mm -hmm. I actually even have it here on my computer right here. Okay, now watch this, Pearl. You're going to love this even for your show. 
okay? Here's just basic research, you can look this up, that guess what happens? Sex is a major determinant of a certain enzyme in the body to deal with certain hormones. Mm -hmm. Meaning what? Meaning women have more enzyme, the certain enzyme, and I'll list it for you so your listeners can try to debunk me on this, mm -hmm. fact check me on this, CYP3A4 mm -hmm. enzyme. Okay, it's part of the whole P450 cytochrome aspect of the body. And it's mainly in the liver, small intestine, and other organs. But here's the point. Women by nature have more of it because once you have estrogens produced, they need to be converted to other forms. So by nature, women have more. So now they have more mm -hmm. genetically. Mm -hmm. So they're going to produce more because they have a higher load of estrogens in there. Mm -hmm. Now, if we take males and put the same levels of estrogens in them, regardless of what they think they are, their body does not have the, the physical capability, the enzymatic capability to convert that hormone, which is going to lead to an elevated level, which is going to lead to major physical and mental problems. Mm -hmm. See, so I don't want to have discussions about what you think a male is and all these things that I'm going to go, just take this one enzyme that is meant to convert hormones from one form to another, mm -hmm. and women have a dominant in it compared to men because they have they have to convert all these things. And now if you take that level of a male, female and put it into a male, mm -hmm. you're going to make them sick. Right. Doctors, you have taken an oath to do no harm, and now you're going to harm them. Do you think that the it's like it's kind of back to the breakdown of the family? And it's almost like we're living worse lives than we were before, but with like better technologies, what I realized, because there's all these people that grew up in single parent homes, or even me, I was thinking about this, where I grew up in a two parent home, like two parents that loved me, but there's still because I was so into sports, right? I mean, if I'm if I'm gone, if I have school six, seven hours a day, then I'm going to sports five hours a day, what time do I have? You don't even know. And I'm, yeah. and I'm going away on weekends, like travel. Like I don't know what you know about travel volleyball, but it's like it's, it's very intense where it's like on um, like two, My daughter three. Played. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, two, three weekends out of the month, you might be out of state. Right. Yep. And so it's like I, I realized I was like, there's some basic skills I don't have because I was yep. so freaking busy in high school. And so I like I've been learning to cook the last two years and I'm a lot I'm a lot better. Good. But I realized I was like. It's like when I, when I went on my own, it's like this basic thing. And even me, like in high school, I'm like, it's like the quality of food was so low. It's like we're living worse than we were before because we're trying to like do so much, you know? And then I realized yep. too, like through people that I know where like, okay, I, I, there's someone that I know that grew up in like a single mother home and I'll call my dad for like everything or my mom or whoever yep. it is. Right. And they were, they, they were saying like, Oh, I'm so jealous that you get to like call your, your dad. Like I've I don't know anyone that calls their dad. And I'm like, wait, you don't. And so what I realized is I was like, because of like the breakdown of the family, which I think is women's fault. Yeah. I think it's all women's fault, but that's a different, <laughs> but, but like, we, we live like worse lives than before, even though we have better technology than before, because we're like sleeping worse, we're eating worse, we yep. spend less, we and we, we don't have extended families, we have, we don't spend as much time with our parents, you know, we move all over the world. And I was like, wow, it's, it's kind of crazy. Because when you look at it from like a macro perspective, it's like, we're living worse lives, even though we have more technology. Well, let me, let me give it and I, I heart so at least this. I 100% agree with you, but let me spin it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the concepts and the ideas that I shared with you today, mm -hmm. you could be a single mother and apply these. You really could. Mm -hmm. See, I, I think what happens is this. I agree that the breakdown of the family has been absolutely devastating mm -hmm. for things. But mm -hmm. you got to remember, I take care, I took care, and I still do, of single moms that actually apply these things. And I can give you one example of a woman that actually, no joke, she was probably the worst fertility uh, um, in as far as physical state I ever took care of. And obviously she has an mm -hmm. awesome baby boy. Well, not a baby anymore, uh, about three years old. Mm -hmm. But here's the point, is the fact that she takes all these concepts, being a single mom now, mm -hmm. and no joke, and her, honor, her husband was abusive physically, so she had to believe in him, which I was surprised how much that happens. Mm -hmm. But the idea is this, is, and now she's applying these concepts to her, but also to her son. And she's also saying, hey, listen, 
I can't be that mask and part to you. So she's actually had other people actually be that mask and part to her. So yes, it's much easier. So here's what happens. It's much easier to accomplish these things with a two-parent household. Mm -hmm. But I think what happens is this. If my message I gave you went to a single woman or a single man or a divorced woman or a divorced man that way, and they apply these things and say, listen, mm -hmm. let's say that all of a sudden my wife died. I will say, listen, and let's say I want to stay single, okay? I would want to have those feminine aspects brought into them. But as a guy, here, watch this. As a dad of four daughters, mm -hmm. I have never once asked my daughters to be masculine. Not once. You know what I'm saying? Not once. Because you know why? And you talk about, you talk about, you know, um, daughters calling. My oldest daughter who's married, my, you know, my other daughters and some of that, they come to me constantly that way. Mm -hmm. Because you know why? Because, and they're up. And I have a masculine son-in-law. Be kind of cool. And because and, he was with me for four years, training like crazy like this, to be a man. Okay? But the idea is this. So, so think of this way. Because here's what happens. Here's where you're going to get criticism. I think even conservatives in, in, in the United States get criticism. There is a lot of people that are divorced. What do I do now? I failed. No, no, no. Apply the concepts of masculine and femininity. And guess what happens? This. Do you know how many people? I had a doctor, a young female doctor, literally ask me this. Will you be my dad? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. See, I can step in that masculine role. And that's what we can do as a society. Mm -hmm. See, you don't have to be my biological daughter to treat you as a daughter. Mm -hmm. Get this. I know it sounds funny. I kind of treat my company like I'm that masculine dad. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to protect you women from stressing out even within the thing. And they can have even a great husband, but I, this whole environment is going to be that way. So I, I would rather say to people this. The breakdown of the family actually is bad. But you know what I'm saying is this? I can actually tell you, look at the men today. Mm -hmm. Men aren't being taught how to be men. Mm -hmm. Women are taught how to be women. Mm -hmm. So even if they're together, you just have two bad ideas together no, and, that's what, and it doesn't work. You know what else I realized? I was like, even, even like men and women together, like there are very few couples that really interact with each other, like masculine and feminine. Like a lot of times- they're not like, taught. Yeah, no, I know. And that's the thing. Like I realized it started with, like our grand, like I feel like our grandparents' generation was like kind of like the beginning of the end, or like like my like the forty to fifty year olds, like they're all the ones that are divorced now, and their parents were yeah. separated, and their parents stayed together. Like that's what I've noticed when I've asked people I guess, about like I got their a, parents. And I, their I got an opinion on this. Okay, go ahead. And it relates to what you're saying. I got a very good. I got an opinion on this. I apologize for. I very apologize for interrupting you. Yeah, you're fine. Um, but you, you, I don't want to lose this thought. Mm -hmm. If you think about it this way. And can you do me a favor? Can you say hi to auntie for me? I absolutely love her. I will, okay? I will. <laughs> she I will. Love She's absolutely. Yeah. But let's take that concept. Mm -hmm. Do you know what's really funny? I loved your video the other day when you call it wife school. Mm -hmm. I love that. You see, see, if you think of it this way, I, there's a difference between, you know, raising your kids and training your kids. Mm -hmm. See, if a parent, now this is, gonna, this is not going to go over well. Mm -hmm. If a parent ever says to you, I gave you a great home. Okay, you had them. You're supposed to give them food and shelter. Mm -hmm. But if all you do is give your kids food and shelter, then you're going to let the world teach them, school teach them, churches teach them, which I don't even go there because mm -hmm. I, I love Jesus and some of that. But I think churches have done a horrible job of training and preparing kids. So we are not preparing young men for the competitive world. We're not training and, uh, uh, and, and preparing women for what is going to come out to the world that way. So they go to college and they go, woo, I'm getting attention. And look at all the girls, what they do when they get there because they weren't prepared saying, listen, guys, were, were, you know, they have major sexual desire. That's why I kind of laugh, but like going, if you let the world train them up, you're going to get what you got now. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I love your show. That's why even what I do as a doctor, mm -hmm. I'm trying to train up young ladies and young men to actually be good society people based on their biology. And I, and I started out just having sick women. We need to start training. Why do you think your show is popular? Because you're actually training. You don't realize that, Pearl. Mm -hmm. You're training people for better future generations. Mm -hmm. A lot of the men should be on there just saying, Pearl, thank you. Mm -hmm. Because you're setting these women up to succeed, well, vice versa. We need to set the men up to succeed. Mm -hmm. Well, and a lot of people act like I, th I think I'm perfect with it. And I certainly don't like, I think like every most, I think most people like, like I, I always say I was sort of raised to be a boy. Like I grew up between two boys and I, and I was just a tomboy. I didn't really care about that stuff. And I just think that in like, I, it, it was really interesting to like, think about men and women relationship dynamics because I was like, oh, wow. 
you know, becoming one of the boys doesn't make you make them want to date you, you know, <laughs> like if anything, it's like the opposite effect. Well, because you know why, but do you know why? Mm -hmm. Here's what happens. Now, I, I, want to, I want to pull this up. Just give me two seconds here. I apologize for this, but this will make complete sense mm -hmm. when I bring this up, okay? When you look at, um, here, wait, let me, let me grab this real quick. Oh, I forgot. I, I, did, I, I do trains at my company on a regular basis, okay? Um, it's, wait, what would I call that last time? It was Zoom. Um, here we go. Um, when you look at, mm -hmm. you talked about the characteristics, we consider a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Whenever you... As a young kid, let's say you had those characteristics of males, competitive and decisive and yeah. laser focused and all these things, they consider you a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Now, as a young girl, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. But see, here's what happens. That's not really a tomboy. You just are, you just display some of those characteristics. But what women forget is they also have those feminine characteristics, mm -hmm. which are which are needed. Some women show them more than they show the tomboy quote aspect that way. Mm -hmm. But here's what happens. And this is why I believe women now watch this. This will bring women mental peace. Society was built by men. It's based on those characteristics of men. And the sad part is this, is, and we're trying to get away from that, but that's how you, remember, competition mm -hmm. creates better things. You're an athlete, you understand. It. Creates better quality, creates better competence, creates better efficiency. So now, women go into the work world. Women that succeed in the work world have to be tomboyish and, and kind of take on those marital characteristics so therefore, that's why you can concede, succeed in the business world. Mm -hmm. But here's what happens this. If you try to bring the femininity into the business world, that's what the woke culture is trying to do. It's all about atmosphere and actually culture and stuff of like that. Yeah, but that doesn't pay the bills. That, uh, if, you actually went to, if you went to an NFL player, a Chicago Bears, since you're from Chicago, and said, you know something? You need to be more compassionate to the person <laughs> that's trying to keep the people together. See, you laugh about that. Yeah, it comes back right, to that. Right. In sports, it's the only way men can be men. Mm -hmm. But that's not the real world. Do you see what I'm right. saying? And I look at women and say, listen, you're so feminine. Now, this is not going to get me some fans now. Mm -hmm. You're so feminine. Don't enter the workforce. Mm -hmm. Because you know why? You're going to get crushed. And when you get crushed, you're going to go to HR and try to get HR to make the people that are competitive, making the company better, bringing the money in, you're going to make them less and you're going to hurt society. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not appealing to people, but here's what happens. The more feminine you are, and I'll say this, the more feminine you are, you're going to attract more of those masculine men mm -hmm. because all the traits that I like are not tomboyish. Mm -hmm. I, they're wrong. My investigative journalist, Erin, right here, mm -hmm. she has a lot of those characteristics that made her my lead investigative journalist. Mm -hmm. But her husband also works for me. But when she gets home tonight, she knows how to turn on her femininity. Mm -hmm. So she, she does that. So come work for me. Have some of those masculine traits. Mm -hmm. But don't forget you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Don't take that away from you. Don't transfer that to home because your husband doesn't want to be competed with. He wants those feminine qualities and peace and everything. And if we, So who has it easier in the workforce? Men. They do. Because they can just be themselves all the time. Women, you enter the workforce, you better have both characteristics to be able to navigate through there. Otherwise, what's going to happen is this. You're going to have to turn those off. And when you go home, you have to be feminine. Otherwise, you're going to lose that masculine man. Yeah, no, it's interesting because I took like a personality test, like the Jordan Peterson, the big five. Yep. And it's funny. I'm actually really agreeable. Like I, I'm like um, 75th, I think, percentile agreeableness. Yep. But and so I was like, I wonder how that works. Like, how am I agreeable? But I still like sports and I like to play and compete. I was like, it doesn't really make sense to me. I don't even know why. <laughs> well, sure it does. Mm -hmm. It makes complete sense though, mm -hmm. because here's what happens: is there's certain there's certain characteristics about you that are competitive and want to win. Mm -hmm. But here's what happens: but you also know to win with a man, you can't use those characteristics. You're not gonna you can't be in competition with your man. Mm -hmm. See, so see what it is is understanding that. These are male characteristics. These are female characteristics. Mm -hmm. And here's what happens this. We don't hear, do you understand how many people I've, I've heard say this? That when all of a sudden, if a male goes home and tries to be a second dad, and I'm sorry, women, men are not supposed to be second moms. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I apologize, I mean second dad. Men go home and try to be a second mom. You're actually competing with that mother. And she'll resent you for that. Mm -hmm. Let her be the mom. You be the dad. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's really funny. And that's when women are like, you know, just he's more of a mom than I am that way. Mm -hmm. And she'll actually feel like less of mom from her husband. Mm -hmm. You saying? And vice versa. Mm -hmm. It's like if a 
if, if, if and, and I know I apologize because people don't like this term. If a soy boy, which is more of a feminine man, enters the work, work world, mm -hmm. he'll be chewed up because right. he's not competitive. Right. And this is in, in that part is this. And I mean this sincerely. That's why when guys start to get obese, I'm sitting there going, man, your testosterone levels are going to start to drop and you're going to walk into a, a world that's very competitive mm -hmm. and very, you know, society driven that way, which is great because those characteristics build society in all the world. Mm -hmm. And you're going to try to compete. Good luck. You, you, your, your physical stamina can't even keep. I can work 20 hours a day. I can get I can get six hours sleep every night and still go. I run. A, you talk about 100 miles an hour. But guess what? I don't eat anything bad. I do the right things for my body. My my testosterone levels are are are, are at 851, which would be considered teenage levels. Mm -hmm. But that's what we can do. Wow. And I'm a, and I'm 48 years old. You're you're inspiring me. I'm like I'm gonna start going to bed on time. I'm gonna start. Thank you. I'm gonna start stopping eating sugar. Oh my gosh, I'm almost starting at. They get here 6:30 now. Eight. We used to start at like 11:30, 11. So we're now at eight, which is good for us, you know. Yes. <laughs> Yes, maybe yes. maybe one day we'll get to seven, you know. Well, I'm very I'm very happy that I made some simple, uh, simple things for you for that can change your life dramatically. And that's what I'm hoping everybody's gonna get from this podcast. Away is I know some of the things I said are gonna be challenging because there's change that's needed, mm -hmm. but the change is good, and it can lead to great things both physically and mentally. And that's all I've done as a doctor for 24 years, and I came at it from a different perspective. And because our current perspective is leading people down the wrong way. And so there's people like you that go out there and say, I disagree. And I wrote a book and no joke, me and Aaron, and, and we wrote a book uh, um, and I just said, I disagree. And my new book is coming out in September. It's called, I still disagree because <laughs> it does, the, it's actually gotten worse. From what I'm teaching is the totally opposite. Mm -hmm. It's gotten worse over the last 24 years. But I won't stop teaching. They've 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 shut down my YouTube. They've shut down my Facebook. They've kicked me off things. But you come back and you just keep on going mm -hmm. because you know why? People will find good messages. They're gonna find them. Mm -hmm. So yep. Anyways. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I love listening to you talk. You like I learn so much every time I talk to you. Actually, um, do you want to oh, tell the you. people where they can find you, find your channel? Um, well, my whole thing is called The Wellness Way, thewellnessway.com. Um, my Instagram is probably my biggest. It's one thing I haven't been kicked off yet. It's Dr. Patrick Flynn. Um, but yeah, like I said, I have a ton of videos on my website that cover all this stuff. It's at thewellnessway.com or Dr. Patrick Flynn on Instagram. Um, don't know how long it'll be before I get kicked off that, but at least my website, they can't kick me off and everything because I host my own servers and everything like that. So it's kind of nice. But, uh, you know, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. I shared some ideas that uh, are going to change people's lives and make them better. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe when I'm in um, Chicago, maybe I'll come up, see your studio and stuff. I'm going to be there yeah. next month, like end of next month. More than welcome. You come hang out in our studios cool. and see our, our amazing team, see our writers, see our doctors, see us this. And uh, our major corporate office uh, is here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on. Guys, Thanks, make bro. sure um, you like the video on your way out. Subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you next time.